Hello, Looney listeners. You are listening to episode 10 of Into the Night, a Moon Knight podcast. I'm one of your hosts, Ray. I'm Rebecca. And I'm your third host, Connor, running out this amazing cast. This week, however, just one issue. Moon, uh, Jeff Lemire's Moon Knight, or you may, issue 10. So sit back, relax, grab out that issue, follow along, and get your concho on. Oh, welcome. Welcome, everyone. How are we all doing this week? Good. Good. Yeah. Yeah. Excellent. We've got, uh, we have uh, New York Comic Con um, just starting this weekend. But more importantly, actually, we have the return of Rebecca. So, <laughs> thanks. Hey, thank you so much, Rebecca. Thanks so much for coming back. Um, it, it was such a blast last time. It's always um, a and yeah, and just to have you for for the start of this arc and a panel by panel, um, I can't wait to, to dive right into it. Uh, but before we get into that, uh, I just want to put it out there. Um, Rebecca and Connor, I'll start with Rebecca. Um, what have you been currently reading over the last week? Well, I'm in the middle of a big booster gold read for my little ah. foray into DC for the for the moment. <laughs> so I'm slowly working my way through that because every week there's always new comic day and that pushes everything back um mm-hmm. and then for the new comics black bolt which was amazing uh iceman mm-hmm. which was delightful I had uh, a really good panel panel of the week <laughs> yeah <laughs> um and iron fist which was yeah also, what what did you i liked what did yeah, what did you think of um of Iron Fist? I read that this morning actually. Um, I liked and... it. I mean, it's like it's it's weird because it's just a bit unsettled to go from one story arc to the next with this little the little yeah. Shang Chi one in the middle. Um, yeah. But I yeah I like I, li- I like the new characters Ed Brisson and Mike Perkins brought in for the first arc. So it's kind of nice mm-hmm. to go back to them. Um, gives yeah. a real sense that they that he has a plan for the story he wants to tell. And some of the stuff at the end almost made me cheer. So, ah. With the little cage, and, uh, and I think I think you get the nod, nod, wink as to I like <laughs> animals in comics. There was an animal in this comic <laughs> that made me very happy. <laughs> oh yes, of course, of course. I, I, look, I don't want to spoil it because it's still relatively no, new. But that's, um, that's why I'm just going to that that amount. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but uh, also, uh, just to be more cryptic as well, um, did you did you pick the the kind of the other reveal? <laughs> if I can be uh, <laughs> no cryptic enough, no, didn't. I didn't as well. I actually thought it was someone else. Did yeah. you have that same thing? Yeah, 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 yeah. That was so that was good actually because yeah, um, I, I was it was yeah, unexpected, but, but, but I because I was going into it going uh, I've. <laughs> One of the I I read the old saber tooth issue a long time ago, mm-hmm. um, and obviously he's on the front cover of the legacy um, thing. Yeah. So I was like, and it was an all right. And I was like, I don't know if they're really old enemies that I'm that interested in, but um, I, I it, it grabs me. The art's still amazing. Um, I still think it's one of the underrated current titles because yeah. of all the furore about Iron Fist and stuff like that. But um, I think it's doing a really good job, and yeah. I, I think it sits quite nicely with the comicsology series that Carrie Andrews is doing, which is yeah. the Immortal Iron Fists. Um, and I was a bit worried about whether the two would have any sort of points of contact. But I think they work very well together. Yeah, there's definitely a um, a difference between, like, the art as oh, well. Oh, yeah. Um, I like Brisson's art. Oh, no, sorry. Not Brisson. Perkins yeah. art is, is so Stunning. kind of... Yeah, stunning and gritty. Yeah. Um, and then you have that really, like, almost caricature um, yeah. art of, uh, is it Chan? Afi Chan, yeah. Afi Chan, yeah, yeah. But, uh, yeah, no, enjoying both of them as well. Yeah. I mean, Black yeah. Bolt is just, like, I think the finest thing Marvel's printing at the moment. Like, oh, Black Bolt, uh, yeah. yeah. That, that would have to be my pick of the week. Uh, and I've still got a couple of comics to read, so yeah. <laughs> it's uh, it's really up there. Yeah. Um, uh, how about you, Connor? 
Uh, I have read uh, an issue from last week and a whole one issue from this week. Um, I've been a busy boy. Uh, my last stint before this morning was being awake for 42 hours, so I've been Whoa. cracking cracking it out. So if I, if I still sound a bit tired, I'm still getting over that. But yeah, I've only read one comic, which is uh, Eugenic by James Tinney, and it was this uh, crazy, amazing dystopian story that's just kicked off uh if you've read cognetic or mimetic it um it's the third of the trilogy of those books so thematically similar it's fantastic i've got a bunch of stuff sitting there iron fist black bolt that's all i can remember right now but plenty of things i swear uh spirits of vengeance one sitting there because oh I don't yes, read yes enough uh ghost rider and yeah mm-hmm. i'm very excited I'll, it's actually a pretty big week for me yeah Yes, yeah. it, it was, was, it was a, a great week. week. Start of legacy, really. So, yeah, mm. all kicking off. Um, uh, Rebecca, uh, did you get Spirits of Vengeance as well? I, I picked that up. I thought I that did. was I thought that was pretty good. Um, I found it a little bit confusing. Oh, really? Like, I didn't dislike it, and I read it when I was really tired. It was like one of the first ones I read, and yeah. I have a really crazy workload on Tuesdays, Wednesdays, uh, and then yeah. I tend to go to the cinema, and then I come back and always shattered and read whatever comics I can get through, and I was like, I've got to read Spirits of Vengeance, I've got to read Spirits of Vengeance, and I was just like going, I, I don't really know if I understand what's going on, so I, 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 <laughs> I will reread it, because I liked yeah. I liked the art well enough, and I liked the, the art characters, was yeah, so mm. there was a lot yeah. of on, there was a lot of shirts on people. Which I was surprised <laughs> about. I think uh, I could say that without spoilers. Yeah, um, yeah. Um, yes. Oh, well, for me, uh, you know, to see um, and look, we all know Blade's going to turn up yeah. sooner or later, and that I, I thought that was really good. It was very much a setup for yeah. um, for what's to come. Uh, but no, I, I really enjoyed it. It's great to see see Ghost Rider, Johnny Blaze yeah. in, in it. So. It'd be nice so that he was, really he was in Iceman as well, so that was kind of nice. Ooh. Oh, was he as well? Yeah, because it's the old champions team. Oh, oh yeah. Hercules. Yeah, yeah. Well. yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah, shirt. Hercules. <laughs> <laughs> I, love that. I love that panel with... Uh, what was he talking about? His, uh, his, uh, his crotch his, vibrating? Yeah, his crotch is vibrating. <laughs> oh, no, it's my mobile phone or whatever, yeah. He's, cool. <laughs> He's very funny. They all go and... Bobby goes on his first date. With a man. Oh, okay. Ah. Um, and it's in the aftermath of uh, they're all getting together for not necessarily happy things, and then, but um, yeah. they all get to be his wingmen. So it's oh, okay. Angel and Herc, and um, yeah, it's pretty cool. I enjoyed it. Wow, excellent. Heck yeah, yeah. I um, I looked at I I read uh, the latest Guardians of the Galaxy as well. I thought it was pretty cool to see the Raptors and. Um, kind of like to see. I was, I'm always fascinated with the Dark Hawk. Um, yeah. Assume and and anyway, this this harks back to the Novas Nova Corps versus the Raptors. So that was pretty cool. Uh, and uh, yeah, Hawkeye Eleven. Um, still collecting that. And uh, Kelly Thompson still doing a really good job. Yeah. Uh, at the moment, it's yeah. You, you awesome. got that as well, Connor? Yeah, sitting there for me. Love mm-hmm. it. It's really really good. The art, I'm, I'm really loving. Um got really good uh uh facial like facial art uh, it's, it's really cool um and uh yeah just a story with madame mask is is pretty cool um i've just got also the punisher the platoon just on my pile uh just waiting to read that and astonishing x-men but um yeah generally all kind of up to date so oh actually rebecca i uh, i read issue five this will tie into moon Knight. loony listeners will we'll finally get there mm-hmm. <laughs> um I uh, uh, read issue five of uh, Bemis's Full Killer, so I finished off that. Hey! Uh, <laughs> yeah, it was good. I mean, good, right? it was. It, it was okay. One of the things I got to say then about Max Bemis is that he'll never lead you down the path that you probably think things will go. Uh, just judging from this last issue. So, uh, what I found really really hilarious and good uh, in that last issue was he comes up against the, the other full killer yeah and uh the guy's talking you know talking himself up and then just you know bam <laughs> he just yeah. he shoots his head off um and i'm, I'm like what <laughs> like this is like we're still in the first act right yeah um so anyway he's gone uh and then i loved how beam has brought in uh the punisher mm-hmm. and this this sense of um 
of, of hopelessness for yeah. uh, for full killer, and so he ends up in jail. And the ending is just like, you know, it's not happy. It, it kind of no. is a little. Yeah, but, but it's, it's, it um, seems to it seems to be what's right. Mm, it's like yeah, yeah exactly. it fits the story very well. Yeah. So I'm. Um, you know, it, again, it's just making me more and more excited for, for what Bemis will do for mm-hmm. Moon Knight. Um, I, I actually really enjoyed it. I might actually think if I do have some spare coin, I might have to pick up the trades for that. See, because, it's uh, totally worth it. Hidden gem. It is. <laughs> A hidden oh, gem of those awful Deadpool yeah. spin-offs, and then they came up with Full <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Marvel come up with, you know, they have hit and misses, they have big titles that flop, they have small titles that succeed, and this is kind of one of them that just... Um, is a bit of a, um, a sleeper. Yeah. And, a, and, yeah, I'm so glad that you put, put me onto it. Um, and I'm very excited that Bemis will, um, yeah. will take the I reins. Yeah, shows me. up in Moon Knight. Oh, that'd be yeah, amazing. I hope so. Yeah. Well, there's got to be some way that he's got to, um, you know, crack out of the situation that he was left yeah. in after Full Killer 5. So, yeah, that was a, I found that was really good, good. as well. Um, also, just a quickly, um, uh, The Runaways has... has garnered a lot of attention lately from New York Comic Con. Uh, they've released a couple of trailers, uh, and uh, I think the panel was on Comic Con. Yeah, they showed, uh, the, did first, you manage... they showed the first episode yeah. during the trailer. Okay. Yeah, oh, wow. okay. Yeah, and, and it seems to have gotten positive reviews. Yeah, did you, um, yeah really positive reviews. Uh, yeah, what are your thoughts? Both of your thoughts on, on I the I just watched the trailer, funnily enough, because I, I tend to avoid mm-hmm. these things, and I was like, ah, oh, fine, yeah. let's watch it. Yeah. I can't wait. I can't wait to see the runaway. Yeah, me neither. It looks so good. Yeah, they, they didn't reveal too much, like yeah. in the trailer, I thought, which was good. Um, you know, the likes of, uh, of of runaway fans, I guess those that have read it, like ourselves, you kind of know what's up ahead. Mm-hmm. But um, but they seem quite. It, it's quite uh, faithful to the comic. Um, and I'm going to try to get Eve to watch it. <laughs> I think I think it, it kind of looks grounded enough. You know, she won't be too. Um, uh, overwhelmed by you know the Marvel universe for it, I think it, it, it's pretty much a standalone. Mm-hmm. Um, I think. Hmm. Yeah, absolutely standalone. Yeah, yeah. Okay, well, um, apologies, loonies. We just wanted to uh, <laughs> just wanted to debrief on uh, what we were all kind of catching up on, especially with New York Comic Con this weekend. Um, nothing but... on um, Moon Knight. Sadly, we're like two days in and nothing. No. Yeah, which was um... ridiculous. It's a disappointment. Uh, not not even in. Um, didn't they release some some games like Marvel? Or was that is that gone? Marvel Lego Two. Yeah, yeah I think Connor said that. that wasn't Moon Knight. I didn't really look. Oh, no, that it? was um, Phantom Rider. Oh, okay. Oh, Phantom Rider. Okay. Uh, What's okay. <laughs> yeah, fair, fair enough. Fair enough. <laughs> was that the one that um, was that the one that Austin put up on on the Facebook group? No, this was uh, Jordan and the Serious Issues group. Oh, okay. okay. Oh, sorry. Yeah, yeah, Jordan. Yeah, yep, yep. Excellent. <laughs> Collusion. Fair enough. Um, all right. Well, let's. Um, sorry, Loonies, to keep you waiting. <laughs> let's get into. Um, let's get into our news for this week. Uh, there's not too much there, but we've had a, a hand from some of the Loonies who have um, dropped in a couple of uh, juicy bits into our yeah. Facebook group. So the first one comes courtesy of Joshua. Uh, and it is one of the variant covers for yeah. uh, the upcoming Moon Knight issue, so issue 188. Uh, and we have a cover artist here by Daniel Warren Johnson, uh, and it's a uh, it's a ripper. It's got it's got Moon Knight uh, pretty much aflame. It's amazing. <laughs> um, yeah. 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 What What are your thoughts on what could possibly <laughs> uh, this be depicting? I think I just love the general motif of this uh, new big bad, the truth, just sort of mm-hmm. just burning out Moon Knight's world, like invading every part to pull him out by the shadows, but just having everything like he knows and love ablaze. Just, you know, this is a villain that Moon Knight will have trouble fighting. It's just sort of this impressive force that's just beating down on one man. Mm. It's big. It's a bloody god fighting a, fighting a little man. Mm-hmm. It is. Yeah. And like, like Moon Knight is, um, for all intents and purposes, he's just a man, right? I mean, he yeah. he, he he has been resurrected by Conchu, but 
apart from you know that volume two, he hasn't got any special powers or anything like that. Um, so he's taking on a guy like a sun god. Um, mm-hmm. So this looks pretty good, actually. I wonder how many I've, I heard along the grapevine there were about what there are probably about three or four variant covers. Is that correct? five? I think five, about four okay. or five, yeah. Oh right. Or at least that first issue, and then uh, even yeah. possibly three or four for the next. Mm. Yeah. Because I saw um, when I went to my local comic book store um, to pick up, you know, this week's pull of uh, like Iron Fist and Spirits of Vengeance. Uh, yeah, I did see a fair few variant covers there. Um, and I also saw actually a lot of the lenticular covers. Um, so I just actually, I just wanted to pull back a bit and ask what you guys thought. Um, I, I thought those lenticular covers were meant to be kind of hard to get for retailers, but like, there were there were shelves of them where, mm. where I was. Um, what, I don't know. Was this Was this something that Marvel kind of pulled over our eyes or... I think, I think one no? of the, I think one of the comic shops over here said that initially they hadn't offered non-US stores the same kind of discounts as US ah. stores, but then they oh, changed okay. that so that it led to them buying right. more. But I I don't know. I it's one of those things that some of the retail side is usually quite murky about what goes on. Mm. I have no idea. Yeah, you, you're I, probably right yeah. just with how um, Marvel seems to run these things. That This was probably a last-minute thing that retailers realised, oh, they're printing these en masse that we can get. Because, yeah, it really did seem yeah. like these were the special variants, but I think a lot mm. of the other ones you see coupled, like probably that Flame one will probably be like a 1 to 150 sort of yeah. variant yeah. or something crazy. Yeah, so I reckon for the collectors out there, I reckon you shouldn't be aiming towards the lenticulars. I think aim towards mm. uh, some of the other variant covers. Yeah, I think um, so. And as Connor mentions, yeah, this one by um, by Warren, da- Daniel Warren Johnson might be one worth looking at. Um, so, yeah, anyway, uh, that's a good one. Um, we'll, we'll put that uh, in our show notes as well. Uh, have a look. It's a great, great piece of art. Um, second, uh, Connor, you, I think you, you posted this on the Facebook group, right? Um, it was a yeah, TV yeah, show it was something very cool. Yeah, a uh, little site called uh, Observation Deck. You can find them uh, Observation Deck dot uh, Kinja K I N uh, J A dot com. It's uh, just a little a little use on there on the site. Just um, pitched a cool Moon Knight show. Just their own sort of fan want for Netflix or. And he shows that'll pick up our our sheep face because we want him soon. <laughs> it was it was quite in depth, wasn't it? Yeah. I mean, no. like, have, have you guys um you read it all? I, I um yeah. I spent some good uh, good time looking through this, and there's been a lot of thought into it actually. Um, and I really do enjoy the little tweaks that he's made. Um, so the the big one is that he and I think taking a bit from um from Bendis. He uh, he wants to like his pitch is selling it um is setting it in Los Angeles in California, which I think is a um is quite different um mm-hmm. a, a different thing to do. Um, but uh, his characters. Was he there for the Bendis run? Was he there for the Bendis run? Sorry. Was he there for the Bendis run? California Moon Knight. Yeah, yeah. He was. He went to. He went to L.A. Um, he he relocated in that stint. Um, yeah. But uh, but this write up by um, by this guy is really cool because like one of the a few of the things that uh, I took from it was. Uh, number one, you have uh, Marlene, um, and he's got her as a female Middle Eastern, late twenties to early thirties, uh, which I think makes a lot of sense. Um, oh, hello. <laughs> yes, yeah, sorry. <laughs> I'm just just to that. Here. <laughs> uh, yes, excellent. Um, and uh, yeah, <laughs> uh, and he, and he's just got. Uh, a little breakdown from uh, for all the thirteen episodes. Um, what are your guys' thoughts on on um, on this article? I thought it was great that somebody spent this much time, like really sort of <laughs> yeah. hashing out. No, but like thinking about some of the problems and hashing out. I mean, like, yes, I, I don't know if mm. it's. I mean, like, I, I don't know if it's exactly how I do it, but I appreciate the effort that went into it, and I would certainly watch this show as is, as is mm. described. So, I mean, it's hard for me to to really put down on paper what I think a perfect Moon Knight show would have in it. Yeah, fair enough. Because I get, I get um, tied, in with, tied up with a lot of the problems, so I think he's done a really good job. 
Yeah, it, it's very persuasive. Like his mm-hmm. overview, as I was reading it, I was thinking, yeah, this is really written as a pitch. I mean, mm-hmm. it's really tight, and it's um, it, it's really uh, it makes a lot of good points. So, um, yeah, I, I, I was kind of all for it as well. Uh, we also have like De- Detective Flint as well, um, portrayed uh, as a female in early forties, uh, sorry, late forties, early fifties, um, which I think would be great as well because there's no reason why. Detective Flint yeah. should be male or female. Um, yeah. Um, so all around, it was it was just a bit of a fun read. I thought. Yeah. I, um, I loved and it, um, yeah. Sorry. I was just uh, yeah. I was. Gonna, I, I love the focus on um, you know, his identities and mental health and uh, you know, mm-hmm. the look at um, especially at his Jewish heritage and that sort of just a, just a very sort of well-rounded uh, sort of just diverse and sort of. And I, I guess if it was written by this guy, well-written cast. Um, but uh, I loved the uh, focus on episodes as well. He gave a little bit of an episode description. I love how yeah. it sort of has um, Moon Knight sort of becoming a vigilante from the shadows with uh, almost sort of gaining the trust of the LAPD through Detective Flint. And yeah. I love uh, – he, he spoke a lot about, you know, it's sort of about a man and his god. And I think yes. it, has, it has a lot of focus on Concha as well. So I think, you know – yeah, obviously this won't be this won't be our show, but I think if the guys writing it took a look at, look at this, they might even find themselves an idea or two to add in to, yeah. to make the show yeah. even better. Exactly, exactly. Who knows if they might kind of like pinch a few ideas here and there. I do like how he's um he's kind of given some thought as to the music for each of the episode as well. Mm-hmm. Um, so you got the likes of Johnny Cash, Nirvana, kind of th- these sort of things right up my alley. Like yeah, <laughs> you know, yeah. the Pixies, Iggy, yeah. Iggy Pop, David Bowie, uh, David Bowie. Yeah, 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 it's um it's really good, and he's managed to in each of the episodes um to include all the key. The key characters are Moon Knight, I think, even like the Rogues Gallery. So he's got, he's actually got Stained Glass Scarlet in there as well. Mm-hmm. He's got Black Spectre. Um, so I think it's really well thought out. And I, I do like actually he um he mentions Zeitgeist Enterprises, um, headed by Carson Knowles. So that's a, another uh, bit of a twist to the Moon Knight mythology um, by having Black Spectre, but by I guess um, by having someone uh, more corporate uh, by turning Black Spectre more corporate. Um, maybe that lends itself to a more of a grounded approach, um, and, and you know, to, to, to the Moon Knight series. Um, but yeah, great. It's got Red Right Hand by Nick Cave. So yeah, it was a, it was generally a very enjoyable um, enjoyable article, I must say. Definitely check out uh, the link which we'll put in the show notes. And we have mm-hmm. to hope no one from Marvel ever reads it, because <laughs> that opens them to being sued if they oh, do yeah. use any of these themes in a TV show. Oh gosh. Uh, which so he's is why, the... yeah, well, no, but that's why they always say don't send us ideas. Yeah, right. Because then, right, if right. any of these things turn up, then someone can say, "Hey, look, look at when I put it online," and like. <laughs> ah, well, that yeah, that, that makes total sense. So yeah. by default, he's uh, he's actually excluded all these ideas <laughs> from from Marvel and Netflix. Yeah. Um, so yeah. yeah, but it's good to it's good to yeah. have read anyway. I, I thought it was really good piece of work. Honestly, it was great to have it up there. Yeah, yeah, like, like I said, very thoughtful. Um, yeah, and and just in, I'm imagining just enjoyable for the fans. So mm-hmm. um, that was a good a good read this week. Um, and just finally on the news, uh, just a small one which came just recently. Uh, it's from ComicBook.com, uh, and Marvel had uh, announced a couple of uh, series for for next year. So one of them they've got a Rogue and Gambit comic book series, which I'm sure a lot of people will be happy about. Um, but they've also got uh, uh, The Return of Legion, which um, which will be um, kind of right off the back of uh, Fox's um, and Noah Hawley's uh, Legion TV series. So that's um, pegged for release in February 2018. Uh, it's going to be a five-issue miniseries. Um, but, yes, the connection to Moon Knight is that the uh, one of the Moon Knight alumni, Wilfredo Torres, who has featured prominently in the Lemire run, um, he's penciling it, and it is to be written by Peter Milligan of X-Force. Um, so, yeah, are you guys uh, going to be uh, looking to pick this up, or maybe even the Rogue and Gambit one? Uh, yeah. Yes. <laughs> yeah? Yeah. <laughs> Oh, I didn't. Pe- I didn't peg you guys for X Men fans. Oh, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a big X Men fan. 
they were, they were one of the few. Oh. Oh, when I started comics, I think I spent a month learning all of their history. I was on Wikipedia and reading just every day. It was a uh, was crazy. Um, but I always love these smaller guys. I think uh, I'm definitely I, I'm excited for Rogue and Gambit because it has Kelly Thompson and Wilfred. Uh, not oh, Perez. Artist mix around. Perez, Thank you, yeah. <laughs> Ferry Perez. Very excited yeah. for that. Uh, but definitely when it comes to the character, it's definitely Legion. I love yeah. him. Love his old mm-hmm. Claremont issues and following on from the incredible legacy. Yeah. Excellent yeah. legacy. But he has a legacy to fulfill by making a series just as good as that because I will hold that series against him. Yeah. <laughs> it's a really hard, like, for anyone to come up after legacy and tackle David Haller is, mm. is something, but obviously interested. And I, uh, oh, X Men yeah. and Spider Man. Were my first two, were my first comics as a kid. So ah, I I okay. what, totally grew up on X Men. Was that um for both uh, the animated series that kind no. of got you into X Men? No, I'm too old for that. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much for that. Uh, no, it was it was the, the comics of the seventies, my friend. Ah, yeah, I mean X Men. Uh, I got to admit as well, kind of got me into comics as well. I was more of the um the early nineties. Um, I love the um, the Mark Silvestri run um, with Chris mm. Claremont, of course, and and you started getting early epi- early issues, sorry, of of Jim Lee. Um, he he's I think he started doing Punisher War Journal first, um, but then he kind of dab- dabbled a little in in the X Men, and he eventually obviously um, uh, came to to um, head the X Men series of the nineties, which. Um, which was, I believe, with Chris Claremont as well, which um, which was just X Men without the adjective. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, X Men was 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 big. I mean, for me, they've kind of dropped a little now, uh, obviously because of the Avengers um, with the Marvel MCU um, and just uh, a slew of other characters as well. But uh, yeah, yeah, there there is a bit of a fond a fondness for the X Men. Um, but Peter Milligan, uh, not only has he written X Force, but we were just discussing earlier, he's a bit of a, a valiant fellow as well. Yeah. Uh, he wrote a lot of Shadow Man and Britannia. And, Brit- <laughs> and Britannia as well. Well, so unfortunately, well, Britannia, um, despite Rebecca, um, uh, <laughs> it being a lukewarm kind of series for you, um, Shadow Man wasn't received all that well, like no. amongst Valiant fans. Um, what are your thoughts on the on, on that series? Uh, I liked it. I thought it was, compared to everything else that came out at the same time, it was mm. a little bit more all over the place. Yeah, yeah, which I can understand therefore why the Luke because he's a, such a cool potential character. I think he's one yeah. of those. He's a little bit like Moon Knight. Like everyone wants it to be good because they yeah. love the kind of darkness around him a little bit. But um, yeah. I didn't hate her. I I quite enjoyed it. I mean, I romped through the run. Yeah. Um, uh, have you read it? Sorry. No, that's it. Oh, have you have you read it, Connor, as well? Or? No, I haven't. But just on Peter Milligan in general, he's uh, the, probably the most fifty-fifty author I've ever read. There are so many runs of his I adore. You know, Shade the Changing okay. Man, Ecstatic, Ecstatic, <laughs> brilliant runs. But yeah. for every run, I think is just amazing and incredibly as a run, I just do not ever want to touch again. So you know, the right. announcement of Legion will be a series I either will hold to dear to my heart forever or just like want to forget about it's 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 such sort of a sort of it's very exciting i think it's Mm. interesting that both of these new series are just five issue minis yeah i think that's a smart way going forward. yeah i think that's a good thing yeah yeah a clear concise story that doesn't get cancelled and we never see it again it's like they can come back with another mini or or it sells great they can switch it yeah they've got plenty of time to switch it into ongoing And, and it's kind of a bit uh it's not common for Marvel to do this. Don't, don't they usually just this um, have a series? seems to be a change in pace for them, yes, which is very well. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, we've been, you know, fans have been saying, you know, if you're going to make it something, a limited yeah. series, just be out and say it, you know, rather than um, drag people along and then all of a sudden just have the, the title disappear off the shelves. Um, so I think this is a really good move. And uh, as you say, Connor, it's, it, it kind of kind of keeps it tight as well. Um uh, and also with Peter Milligan, Rebecca, I, I'm totally with you. I think as well, um, I think unfortunately 
uh, he was kind of lost in the sea of, of really good Valiant titles yeah. at, at that time. Um, and it, I know if anyone who's read Valiant, especially around, uh, yeah, around the reboot time and kind of onwards, um, just the quality was so, is so kind of high. Uh, once there's like, you know, someone that's, I'd say still above average. I, I liked a lot of Milligan stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, but once it's slightly not as good as the others, uh, but then it kind of, can get picked apart, and I think that's what happened with Milligan and Shadow Man. Um, and yeah, a lot of fans have been disappointed at um, the potential loss for Shadow Man. I think, um, yeah, because he's such an interesting character, and he's always there. Uh, he's got the mystical side of things for Valiant. Um, so yeah, but um, for, for Legion, I think Milligan will be will be pretty good. Um, mm. I enjoy the, the the Britannia series as well, um, uh, and so yeah, it'd be interesting to see how he tackles. Um, David Haller. Yeah. Yeah. Alongside Wilfred Torres, who will be great on that title. Oh, yeah, he will, will yeah, actually. That is a reason to read it alone, like, even if the quality's not there. That uh, yeah. will probably pull oh, you no. through. <laughs> yeah, definitely. I mean, for sure, Torres, um, as we've seen with Moon Knight, um, particularly with our last episode, Connor, where you mentioned one of your aspects was, was mm. Torres' art. He actually um, shone in that uh, issue nine, um, and definitely, like he was, uh, I do like his art because it's not it's not too simple, but it's it's not over detailed like um, like some artists. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, like, I know, I'm, I'm reluctant to say Stoko because I do love his art as well, but um, you know sometimes detail is called for and sometimes it isn't. And and with Torres, he gives a really nice clean um, clean look to the books. Um, so uh, it worked. It worked really well with Stephen Grant. Um, yeah, let's see how it goes with um, with Legion. Can't wait. Yeah. Excellent. Well, okay, loonies. Um, that's probably that's probably the news for this week. <gasps> um, what we have coming up now for Over the Moon. Uh, it's just the one issue this episode, and as always, with um, all the new arcs, we'll do a panel-by-panel panel review. So, having just finished uh, Incarnations um, just a week ago, we're looking at issue 10 now uh, of Lemire's Moon Knight series. Uh, this is titled Death and Birth, Part 1 of 5. Uh, it was released um, 4th of January 2017, and we have... Uh, the uh, the core team members, I guess. We have writer Jeff Lemire. Uh, we have Greg Smallwood on pencils. Geordie Belair on colours. Uh, we have Corey Petit on uh, letters. And um, as editor, uh, we, all, we always have Jake Thomas. Uh, Greg Smallwood also did the cover as well. So, so guys, um, I don't know about you, but I've actually cracked open my, um, my hard copy. Single issue for this. All ready to go. Um, yeah, I'm ready to go. Rebecca, Same can I... Same <laughs> good, here. Good, good, good. So let's uh, let's dive in. Rebecca, can I um, ask you maybe to um, read out the, the blurb to introduce us? Yes. When Conchu attempted to invade our reality, filling New York City with sand and pyramids, Mark rejected the deadly overtures of the moon god, destroying himself to save us all. Mark slipped between the lives of his different identities, finally culminating in a confrontation in New Egypt between Mark and the men his mind had created. In order to be whole again, Mark was forced to deal with the disparate elements of himself, and once he did, the ultimate task became clear. Kill Konshu. Dun-dun-dun. <laughs> Dun-dun-dun. <laughs> <laughs> so, loonies, if you've got your books, please... um. Crack them open. We're going, we're going to the first page here. Um, so to open, uh, we have a young Mark Spector playing on the pavement some years ago in Chicago. Um, uh, just the page that will uh, probably that will kick off the arc that probably has changed Moon Knight the most, mm-hmm. just since his uh, since his first issue by uh, Doug Munch. Yes. Yeah. 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 Oh, actually, yeah, for sure, definitely. Um, and uh, I don't know. How do we? Uh, how do we? Dis- how do we first describe this? Um, he's drawing. Uh, he's drawing on the pavement cute. with chalk, and he's mm-hmm. drawing space wolves. 
Just saying. Oh, yes, of course. Oh. Yeah, he is. <laughs> God. Yeah. Done it again. You can say I'm a man of details. I didn't even <laughs> notice. Oh, yeah, very. Uh, yep, that ties in. Oh, which yeah, I thought was amazing. Was I was like going, I totally didn't get that the first time round. I'm like, he's actually drawing the Space Wolves. And like, he's got, notice that. Um, he's got a NASA t-shirt on. So he's obviously interested yeah, I in saw space, that. which yeah. is cute. Yeah. Um, I thought clearly that was bit, Jewish oh, I thought... immediately. Yes. Yeah, clearly Jewish. Right. And uh, and Smallwood draws really, again, if, if you look at the background, very um, synonymous with yeah. uh, with New York. Like yes. uh, those, I don't know what they are, terraces that have the stairs that lead up. And Although the, um, we're the in Chicago, house. remember. Oh, sorry. Of course. Sorry. <laughs> Chicago. Oh, God. Is, is it like that in Chicago? I, I I've only spent two days in Chicago and I don't really remember. Oh, um, okay. Chicago. But I, I always associate that with so. New York. Yeah, yeah. It looks, I mean, it does <laughs> right, look a little okay. bit New York to me, but I, I mean, I, I think go with it because I would like to think yeah, sure. that. I guess yeah, any, I guess in any big city there are neighborhoods that look like this, and because mm-hmm. they've not yeah. said what suburb of Chicago they're in. Oh, yeah, let's, you know, let's I don't. Know. I've only been into the city center, so I, I can't really judge. Let's just call it American architecture. Yeah. So, <laughs> so with a broad sweeping strokes there. Uh, but yeah, so so Mark is drawing on the pavement, having a having a good time, and he's a uh, he's interrupted by a, another young fellow who kind of looks like him, um, just asking him what he's doing, uh, and he's just saying, well, you know, I'm Mark, and I live in this apartment um, just behind us. Um, and uh, the other young fellow says, yeah, well, I do too. Uh, and we get a shot from Greg Smallwood then of a um, a picture on the pavement, mm. which I think is quite symbolic as well. Yeah. Which um, I think is the 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 first portrait of a of a Stephen Grant. Yeah, yeah, yeah it definitely tie. is. Oh. It's definitely yeah. a rich guy bow tie suit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> privileged uh, yeah. young young fella. But even uh, as a and, child, and the... he's wearing more privileged clothes. He's got yeah. a like, polo shirt. He's got full trousers on, whereas Mark's wearing oh, like shorts true. and like uh, knee high yeah. socks. And this kid's yeah. like much. We've got a belt, and he's much more put got together. Got a belt, yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Point, just how much does that yellow pop, like the yellow and whites by Belair, of just the you know the almost identifier of their um outfits? They just they're almost like the first thing you notice on yeah. the page. They're just so vibrant. They are very distinct, aren't they? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, definitely. As Rebecca said, like you, you tend to see – it's a little obscured here, but the, the NASA T-shirt, a bit more yeah. informal wear by, um, by Mark. But um, at the bottom, uh, the other fellow is uh, introducing himself as Stephen Stephen Grant. So, um, yeah, I mean, uh, first page, reader's going, hang on. Yeah. <laughs> I, I don't know about you. The first time I read this, I mm. the, the first thing I thought was – Okay, has has Mark um, uh, created this identity from from a real person? You know, from so I actually thought this Stephen Grant was, you know, Possibly a real person. Real, in yeah. His, yeah, in his neighbourhood. And, and I, I thought, like that um, he introduced the, himself James Bond style as well, Stephen Stephen Grant, because it was it's very <laughs> yeah, like, yeah. oh yeah, we're we're sticking with the whole Stephen Grant. So Rich dapper. Yeah. So, yeah, exactly. Um, it also reminds me a little of um, Doug, a story by Doug Munch, um, which he said that uh, the name Mark Spector actually uh, came from a comic book store, like some an acquaintance that he knew actually at a comic book store. Oh. And he, yeah, and he ended up naming um, Moon Knight after this guy that he got along with in the comic store. So, uh, uh, yeah, I just thought uh, that just reminded me of this. So, uh, yeah, so we're introduced to Stephen Grant. Um, and as we move along, they go back into the apartment building and um, they're just, you know, they're just chatting away. Uh, they're kind of introducing themselves. Mark's introducing that his dad's a rabbi at a synagogue. Um, and Stephen is um, uh, predictably a little vague with his, <laughs> with his details. Um, but, you know, uh, he has dreams. Uh, he, he, he tells He's his dreams. He's going to be rich and which, famous and the movie star. Rich and, exactly. Yeah. Which, um, you know... Uh, could be dreams from Mark as well. So uh, as they go upstairs as well, um, they go into Mark's room, and uh, we get a lot of pop culture references yeah. here. There's a Darth and Vader um, sticker on the door to start with. Darth Vader, <laughs> Chicago Bulls. Uh, this was this was this is 
manner for anyone who yeah. <laughs> kind of <laughs> lives during that era. Um, Chicago, and so anyway, Chicago Bears as well, isn't it, for the other team? Yeah, exactly. Um, they, were, they were big in the 90s. Yeah. Um, and so Mark introduces Stephen to his bedroom, which which actually looks pretty well off as well. I mean, like you know, Steve, uh, Mark's well, not... Well, a rabbi wouldn't, be, family's not, wouldn't yeah. be like yeah. A, yeah. Exactly, but uh, uh, what have we got here? We've got, yeah, we've got the A-Team um, poster. Max Headroom. Uh, Max yeah, Headroom is the big amazing. thing. <laughs> uh, the Star uh, Wars poster obscured by the telescope. Yeah. Oh, yes, yep. Uh, uh, the Millennium Falcon and the, and the yeah. um, uh, what are they called? X-Wings or something? That's, a an, X-Wing. Star Wars. That's an X-Wing up there. Um, X-Wing, yeah. He's got a couple of trophies, which I'd love to know what they were for. Yeah. Oh yeah, um, yeah. Little Godzilla. <laughs> he's got a little oh, Godzilla. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, on the he's left hand your, um, side. Yeah. He's got your eight ball. Your, yeah. Your, um, Magic eight ball. Little Darth uh, Vader on the shelves. Little Darth Vader. I like to think that is the money bank. Yeah. Um, Rubik's like cube. Yeah. A oh, Rubik's cube. Well spotted. Where's that? Where's on the, that? On the, too. on the bottom shelf. Oh, I was like, oh, okay. oh, God. oh my god i just noticed as well he's got you know i don't know if you did it when you were kids those awful like glow in the dark scars stars on your ceiling he's got those just above the millennium falcon oh yeah oh yes <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah but he's so got a he's ball a... beside his trophy could that be like good at baseball Maybe. He's going to good at cricket. It's, it's yeah. going to be, yeah. yeah. I was going to say cricket. I'm going to say cricket. <laughs> ball, podcast, yeah. with, <laughs> podcast with Brits and Australians, we all go cricket straight away. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's red, you know. Yeah. So. His bed's a car, uh, which is gorgeous. I love that, a red car. Yeah. I always wanted yeah. one of those beds. <laughs> and I don't know about you, but <laughs> the, this sort of bedroom kind of reminds me of. Um, a full House, the um, the TV oh, show. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, you're kind of typical. You know, it's got a rug in the middle, timber floors. Uh, it's got you know paraphernalia everywhere, and the telescope. You know, who yeah. didn't own a telescope back in the day? Um, <laughs> and of course, Big Alf, Alf as well. Yeah. I know. <laughs> Just hanging out. So, um, so yeah. So anyway, my gosh, after after that lengthy description of his. Of his bedroom. <laughs> you did say uh, panel oh. by panel. Um, we did. We did say yeah. panel We're by doing panel. thing by thing. Yeah, I <laughs> want to know the panel after Alf, which has also yep. got a space shuttle in it. By the way, is that He Man in the background, or is it a Conan oh, yeah. type I thing? Conan. I, I think it's, it's Conan. Conan. Yeah, but yeah. I wanted yeah. it to be He Man. Too brutish for a sexy He Man. Yeah, yeah. I, yeah. It's a bit too non-comic-y, non-cartoon. Yeah. Oh, he's got a mask sticker as well. Remember yeah. the mask? <laughs> yeah. Oh, awesome. Oh, uh, they had Smallwood. fun. Yeah, had done yourself. Um, does anyone know? Just sorry. Um, while we we're still on this point, the, the green <laughs> spaceman, like no. in front of Alf. Isn't, no. that, isn't that supposed to be like? Um, oh, you have blast the space wolves on maybe. Maybe. Oh, uh, yes. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, there might be a, a bit of a um a subconscious kind I can of. Search it off. Blast off. Blast wolf. <laughs> or it might be just a fictitious, uh, fictitious nah, toy. Fictitious. Ain't nothing. Yeah. Ain't nothing blast yeah. off in this real world. So, <laughs> so after that trip of memory lane, um, where <laughs> we're just looking through, um, uh, Stephen Grant uh, has his eyes on a blast off figure, and Mark, being the the very generous um, boy that he is, uh, says, "Yeah, you can borrow yeah. it if you want." Uh, did, sorry, did you get something, Connor? No, no, no. <laughs> no. Um, and, uh, and then suddenly on the last panel, we get, uh, someone else, uh, calling Mark as he turns around. Um, and it's his dad. Um, is it Elias? Elias is his, is his name? Does, um, I can't remember, but I think I it's think Elias or Eli. Yeah. Anyway, well, I should, I should know, but anyway. <laughs> so he's, uh, he, he sees Mark and, uh, a bit of a reveal is that, um, we see back Mark um, looking at his toys, and it's just him uh, saying, "I'm talking to my friend Stephen." And I think the facial expression uh, oh, that Small just... does for his dad is priceless. Yeah, so uh, powerful. Very powerful. Uh, it, there's a bit of, um, uh, I don't know, a bit of confusion, a bit of a bit of sorrow, um, uh, you know, feeling for for, for Mark, 
who is clearly not in his right mind. I mean, kids around that age may be marked a little too old to be having imaginary friends, right? Um, but he's in the, but he's not, in the ballpark. I mean, it wouldn't be Yeah, unheard, it's not uncommon. Or... Yeah. 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 So it must be at that kind of, you know, at that crux where, where his dad's thinking, okay, well, shouldn't you have outgrown that kind of thing now? Yeah, he just uh, looks really sad. Mm. It looks very sad, um, and we see yeah, Mark standing there in front of an Indy, Indiana Jones. Indiana Jones. Yeah, uh, Hot Wheels <laughs> track down the bottom, I realise. Yeah, yeah, and one of those awful like viewer things. Yes, yeah. oh, I love them. <laughs> you put those in, the little... I love uh, them as well, yeah. Mini slideshows or something. Little pirate just, ship at the bottom. Little pirate ship, and uh, they've, they've got to be Masters of the Universe figures there, surely. Yeah. Is I that like Sna- so. Snake Mountain or something down there? Yeah. Yeah. Um, or was it? Any, no, I anyone. thought that was King Kong. Oh, was it? Okay. I don't know. I mean, they're they're they're, they're a little bit vague and could be anything. <laughs> yes. Yeah. But I mean, definitely, I think Lemire and Small would have given thought for referencing a lot of uh, pop yeah. culture stuff here, which is 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 a real treat, as you can tell from <laughs> from fans reading this. So, um, yeah. So uh, the first uh, the first. I guess, scene. Um, so we see Mark uh, established as uh, having imaginary friends. Mm-hmm. Uh, as we turn the page, we are swept across to elsewhere, which is now. And we have this playful use of panels that, that Small, Smallwood has used in the past. Um, not, not your conventional panels. Mm. Uh, I think he's sticking to a very triangular kind of pyramid yeah. um, pyramid. kind of scheme here with, uh, with New Egypt, I think we should call it. Because yeah. it's a conglomeration of New New York and Egypt. Uh, again, we have Jordi Belair's. Sorry. I may have just got that. <laughs> oh, you may have just got that. <laughs> <laughs> we, we, Connor, we're up to issues. <laughs> <laughs> we, we, we have um we have the the, the greeny greys um which we mentioned previous issue that Jordi Belair associates as, associates with New Egypt, mm-hmm. um uh, Crescent Moon, and we have Mister Knight just standing uh in in the dunes. Um, it's a beautiful looking panel. down. Mm. Sorry, it's just beautiful panel. It is very good. What Shadows I really love about it, yeah, what I love about it is the pink that comes yeah, out. Yeah, pops Jesus out. Diner, amazing. Jesus Diner, the ne- the neon signs. So he sees in the distance down below, because the sands have swept over and created dunes. He sees down, uh, yeah, this pink iridescent kind of light, and and we zoom in at the bottom frame, and there's Jenna's diner. Um, it, it's definitely kind of like a, um, like a, a safe house, I think, for Moon Knight yeah, in general. Yeah, of hope. Um, yeah, and Gina has proven in previous issues that she's there to give him a bit of respite. Yeah. So, um, so anyway, he comes in, uh, and again, very non-conventional paneling here from, from Smallwood, uh, and uh, a nice shot of Gina, and Mr. Knight walks in, uh, she's not... You know, not too phased at this strange fellow yeah, in, in yeah. a suit with a mask. But all the sand it. goes and everything becomes very precise once they go indoors. So you've gone mm. from this very kind yes. of wispy uh, thing. And you can still see some of it behind him as he comes in the door, like some of the sand blooming up. Yes. But yeah. everything yeah. else, like all the, suddenly all the inks are very sharp again. Hmm. Yeah, and, and yeah, that that panel is the only thing where you see the the, the sand subside. And, and there's lots of pink yeah. still in the Gina's diner mm. background. It's, it's, it's a nice thematic thing. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And and so she's still kind of she's still kind of looking for her her sons, uh, Rick and Ray, um, who we haven't. I don't think we ever see in this um in this series. Uh, but uh, they're kind of her um the. Uh, her goal, I guess. Yeah. Like. So she's very much entrenched in her diner because um, she doesn't want to venture out just in case they come back. Um, so she offers uh, she offers Mr. Knight, uh, you know, a bit of a break, some some coffee and pancakes. It's been uh, and as lately. We... <laughs> sorry, been through a lot lately. Yes, yeah. yeah, he's been yeah he's been through <laughs> been through a lot. And uh, yeah, as we turn the page, uh, he gets some nice flapjacks. Uh, yeah, and, and thankfully takes his mask off. <laughs> he does, yeah, yeah, exactly. Pretty hard to eat with with it on. Uh, but he still has the little band-aid over his nose as and well. And he keeps so. his gloves on. <laughs> he keeps <laughs> his gloves on, rolls up the sleeves. Um, but and he's not drinking on. coffee. 
No, it's no, they've gone for yeah. a um, like lemon lime bitters. It looks like yeah. or something, I, yeah. <laughs> or an iced tea. Maybe it's an probably iced, iced tea. tea. Let's just, let's go iced mm. tea. That sounds but, American. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but you can see the the nice um, the nice texture of the stands outside, just the diner as they um, they look at each other in profile, um, and and Mark's worried about like he's lost um, he's lost Marlene. Um, Things are a bit confusing. Uh, he's lost Frenchie as well. Um, but he has this drive, as we saw from last issue, to go back to the hospital. Um, so he tells Gina his plan, and Gina says, you know, why, why the hell would you want to go back there? Um, and, uh, yeah, he just says, well, you know, it, it's just something I have to do. Um, and it, and if I do this, you know, I, I, I think I'll get better. So, um Similar to what we've seen last time, Gina uh, is happy to help Mark, but um, she's mm-hmm. kind of content to stay in the diner um, and just provide for him if he needs to. Um, and so if he ever needs a, a keep the coffee warm for you, she says. Mm-hmm. Um, but, you know, be careful out there. So he has a bit of a rest. So <laughs> he uh, he, he uh, puts on his, his mask. Exactly, that's right, because Crawley is still, uh, he's still lost in many ways. Um and so he ventures out, and again at the bottom panel, uh, we get the nice pink sand, which um, uh, reflects off Gina's diner. So um, that's that's pretty cool. Uh, as we turn the page, we're, we're brought back to uh, to it. just the eyes again. Yeah, what which is a running swords. theme. Um, yeah, well, the yes. Mm. And and these eyes are very driven, right? I mean, like They're if you very remember focused, the first, yeah. Yeah, very focused. They're not of a of a crazy person at all. Um, uh, they're not drugged or you you know from what we saw in issue one of someone who was very kind of out of it. Um, he's a young, vibrant Mark, uh, and he is with his dad, uh, and they're talking to a um, a doctor of sorts. Uh, what's his? I'm trying to read his name. Can anyone read the name on that door? It's pretty hard. Yeah. <laughs> Doc- Dr. Freer uh, something, MD. Anyway, um, his dad obviously has brought Mark here to to kind of get uh, Mark assessed, um, and and uh, Mark's dad talks about how Mark has developed other identities, mm-hmm. um, how he's got Stephen, who, who came at an early age, which we saw earlier in the issue, but he's also got Jake, which is relatively new, and... And as Moon Knight fans, you know, Jake um, is is the cab driver, the more kind of street level guy. Um, and uh, yeah, this is a this is a good little uh, description um, of uh, of Lemire, just I guess describing dissociative identity disorder. Um, so he says, similar to Stephen, we we may go weeks where he's just Mark again, and then out of nowhere, it's Stephen or Jake for a while, and then as soon as they come, they go. There's no rhyme or reason to it. So, um, so Mark is looking very guilty, actually, at um, at his dad describing what Mark yeah, goes through. He looks very sad. Yeah, he's pretty sad, and he's a bit a bit ashamed of it, I think. Um, mm. And so, anyway, the doctor asks, you know, can you can you please just stay outside uh, while I discuss something with your dad? Um, and then we get the nice little technique here. I love it how the word balloons. Oh, that's amazing. Uh, yeah. Yeah, fade it in and out because, like, as a reader, you kind of you're squinting and you're kind of looking to, <laughs> you know, to read the words yeah. yourself. But obviously, it's fashion, so they'll only let you read what you what you are allowed to. Um, so, what we read as a reader is um, reflects what Mark is trying to listen in on, uh, and he's trying to hear what uh, his dad and the doctor are talking about. But he's suddenly. Um, suddenly interrupted and and this page in particular uh, if we look at the panel layout as well you've got um at the top you've got mark uh, uh it's a pretty full panel at the top so about a third of the page mm-hmm. uh and it's a full background um detail with the size of mark looking pretty small against it uh and then as you go down you get um you get smaller panels and it zooms in on mark's expressions um and and when we get the the word balloons from Conchu and the shadow cast over Mark, mm-hmm. um, it kind of adds adds to that tension, um, especially in that last panel 
where um where Konshu was saying that man in there is not your true father. Yeah, and that again you get speech bubble and text. yeah, and you get the eye shot, and then uh, you know one of the one of my favorite panels as you turn the page mm-hmm. is this mixture of art that Smallwood uses for Konshu and for regular Mark Spector. Um, yeah, it's uh. It's very scratchy, like like Conchu, um, um, and I can almost imagine it like in like in a cinematic um, yeah, scenario. It's, it's mm. really you can imagine how scary it would be for a young boy. Yeah, mm. yeah, like a lot of ambient noise coming through, um, like a flickering image of this Conchu, uh, which is shown with the art here of. Um, you know, uh, rough kind of lines kind of going through Conchu. Uh, yeah, and Mark just crouched down at the door. And his eyes, again, in the centre of this page, just show utter fear. And I think there's a reflection of Conchu. Yeah, you can eye. see the bird skull. That's crazy. Yeah. Yeah, which is pretty cool. Um, you know, even with Greg Smallwood's level. Um, and a- anyway, so... All of a sudden, like a horror movie, um, the door opened and it's Mark's dad and everything's back to normal. Uh, and Mark's, uh, sorry, Mark's dad is asking, you know, what's what's going on there, Mark? Um, and, uh, yeah, he actually takes Mark aside and, and says, look, you know, there really is something kind of wrong with you. <laughs> so uh, that can't be good because uh, what all it does um, for Mark is it kind of confirms what he's kind of seen before, which is Conchu. So his dad's saying, look, you know, um, you're very sick. <laughs> uh, you need help. Uh, and Mark can't help but think, oh, gosh, well, I must because I'm seeing this crazy bird skull, you know, figure in front of me. And uh, I like at the end, at the bottom, how uh, Conchu, it's just pure black. Mm. And it's just him to say, I'm waiting. So... It's it's again for me. I think it's it's kind of take it leans um, towards cinematic kind of things, um, almost like Lynchian, um, uh, you know, kind of surreal stuff. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So I think it's pretty. Uh, it's pretty sad just like seeing the father as well, just being like completely unable to handle it and emotionally, you know, you know, he's ne- he's probably never experienced this before and not knowing how to deal with it is just sort of really tragic seeing them interact when I suppose neither of them really understand what's going on and Mm. what Mark's going through. Yeah. I I wonder where he's As someone who went to a child psychiatrist at that, I went to a child psychiatrist (laughs) significantly younger than that. But um, I did have a lot of that. We'll just speak to your mom. You just (laughs) go and do this. Not for anything as bad as Mark, by the way. I was hyper. Yeah, I mean, it, like, <laughs> I was like, did not have these issues, but um, yeah, it's it's pretty terrifying. Mm. And he captures yeah, that I mean, terror, and Konshu adds to the terror, mm. and emerges so, as Mark's probably at his most scared. Yeah, and for for such a young, uh, it's such a young age as well. I mean, that's just <laughs> yeah, just terrifying. You can see it in his face. Um, I'd like to know where his mum is at this stage as well. Like, it's very much a father and son thing. It is, yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, later we do see glimpses of, glimpses of his mum um, in later issues, but, uh, yeah, don't know what's uh, what's going on there. Um, but anyway, as, uh, as we move along on the next page, uh, we're back to elsewhere with, uh, with Mr. Knight in New Egypt, and uh, he's still on his way to um to look for Conchu. So um he finds the the sewer grate, the New York City sewer grate, uh where we remember last time um it kinda leads to um the the subway, I think, mm. from memory. Mm-hmm. And then the subway goes to the hospital. So he uh he finds this grate and he goes down um and Smallwood here uh I'm not sure. Oh, this layout, he's got like eight um, yeah. elongated panels. It's really just interesting. Equally. Mm. I, I always love as well the sort of, you know, it's really one panel chopped yeah. up yes. in, into three. Yeah, it's a, yeah the, the, gutter, the gutters are actually part of the page, of the, of the whole thing. Yeah. Which is, uh, like you, 
Yeah, you see that a lot, that, a lot. You know, with those panels where it's essentially a, a picture, but they 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 chop it up and it kind of focuses you to to look at various or or to slow down your your um, yeah. movement of looking across the panel. Um, but yeah, this is very different. Um, so anyway, so he goes down uh, and he goes underground and there's more sand and and what looks like hieroglyphics uh he finds a torch um and yes yes so he enters um i hesitate to say it is this the other void not the over void the other void it's it's yeah it looks <laughs> like it's a some kind of way into it yeah 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 possibly because, the other void yeah. Yeah, because I know the overvoid is. Uh, we'll see. We'll see that later on, but the other void I think is is where um, Anubis um, is, is stationed. And and anyway, so Mark, uh, Mr. Knight comes down here, and we get the reveal as well. A nice um, a nice kind of half splash here of uh, Anubis and Crawley, who we haven't seen for a while. Hey, um, man. Yeah, fantastic detail in mm-hmm. Crawley's face, facial yes. features, and uh, a, a shout out to Jordi Belair's colours for this cosmic kind of. I don't um, even colour that. That's. Just I know. Crazy the way they just splash and blend. Oh, it's just, yeah, and some of these, pa- some of what's coming up is amazing. Oh yeah. Yeah, I mean it's like if you look at it, it's a mixture of like bluey purple, then you got this hue of green and like you know red and crimson. It's it's a really beautiful look. Um, and in the foreground, we see uh, Anubis and um, and Crawley on what I like to call Anubis's cosmic raft. It's made of bones. <laughs> it's kind of Sorry. similar to yeah, like uh, ferries people along. Um, and anyway, so Mr. Knight uh, arrives there, and he's intent on getting Crawley back. Um, uh, Anubis says, "Well, no, well, yeah. you, know, you made a deal, and this is it, and Crawley's mine." Uh, so there's nothing left. Uh, and then as you turn to the other page, again, we get this very regulated panel structure, even more so now. Um, the, the first uh, the first third, the top third, is exactly as you mentioned, Connor. It's a, a cut-up kind of um, picture of, of a hole. So it, it, again, just focuses you on Anubis, then Crawley. And then I guess it's the distance between them and, and Mr. Knight because mm. there's a panel of just a, a blank wall. <laughs> um and anyway, Mr. Knight says, well, you know, how about we negotiate and do a trade or something? And, and this gives Anubis a, a bit of thought, going, hmm, okay, well, here's an opportunity. Uh, and he mentions to Mark, um, I did lose something in the overvoid a long time ago, mm-hmm. something very dear to me, but I doubt even you could retrieve it, traveller. And Mr. Knight says, well, try me. So uh, he, he's willing and desperate to do anything. He wants Crawley back. And uh, we know from the previous um, arcs how important Crawley is as well. So mm. um, so it's important that he does get him. Uh, it's still very vague as well. And Uber's saying, um, if you were to find it, um, I may be persuaded to let this one go. Uh, but he doesn't really say what it is that uh, Mr. Knight should be looking for. But uh, Mr. Knight says, yep, okay, I'm going to – I'll do it. You know, I accept. I'll, I'll, I love I'll those speech you. bubbles across panels. Yeah. yeah. That whole duality of those two. And that they break you know, that... the bubble for the gutter. Yeah, that's – yeah, yeah I didn't notice pretty that before. Special. I, I love this cool. whole whole page. It's sort of our, our big, you know, action piece, the issue, but it's purely dialogue um, through yeah. action, which is a, a thing – you know, you see talked about on a on a strip panel naked. Check but you can also out. see, but, like, as they're talking to each other, their fists are all clenched. Mm. Like, you know, like, or you know, apart from when he's right at the beginning, what do you need to trade? Yeah. Then their fists are all clenched, and then right at the end, like, marks everyone's hands are open again. Oh yeah. And the dramatic yeah. sort of angles on the faces. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I think I think much. I love it as well. You know, we don't have any action yet, but it's sort of it's still showcasing that you know. Mark's a man of determination. He'll do anything to, you know, do what's right and um, help help his friends. Yeah. Like this is sort of the 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 sort of same sort of motivation you see in Mark when he's whether he's being shot or just here 
getting up and just trying to save his friends. It's yeah. And, and I like how um how Crawley is very casual about everything. Like, he's just kind of sitting down on the rock. Yeah. <laughs> um, you know, the whole situation about getting his soul reclaimed um, and taken back uh, doesn't seem too phased. I mean... Before we saw, he was almost he almost resigned to the fact that he needed to do, to do this to help Mark. But as we went along through incarnations, we saw that Crawley was disappointed in Mark because he made the sacrifice, and uh, Mark was making the same mistakes and going through the same kind of um, cycle over and over again. Um, so yeah, it, it's uh, I don't know, it's just strange, and maybe it's just part of his character just to see Crawley so laid back about it all. Um, but yeah, um, I think what features a lot here is the colours. Uh, I, I can't get my eyes off the, the, the cosmic <laughs> kind of thing of it. No, um, and it's very clever in this whole page. It starts in the top left with pink being the most prominent. Oh, yeah. Then it goes straight to grey. Then you're back yes. to Anubis and you've got the green going into the blue, then the blue. And then it's kind of split yeah. left, right. Blue's on the left, pink's on the right. So yes. It's all like focusing yep. back down again. It's just. Uh, you know, Belair really is amazing. Because mm. yeah. <laughs> you look at this and, like, you even imagine what the inks would have looked like and to then just bring uh, it all to crazy. life. Yeah, it's uh, it, it's really a, a piece of work here. It's um, really good. And, um, yeah, as you say, Connor, as well, the uh, the angles, perspectives um, to, to show Mark and basically profiled one against each other, Mark and Anubis, just talking to each other. And it is uh, full of drama, and he's wearing a full face mask and talking to <laughs> someone who has a jackal head. I know. So, like, crazy. not expressions pull... we're used to. And you're right, they take Crawley out of the equation. You can barely see his face. Oh, yeah, he's just gone. <laughs> no, yeah. But you just you can only it's... see him from, like, side or, like, not... You can't see his eyes No. in any of no, this definitely... page. So, like, you've got all these people who shouldn't be emoting at all. <laughs> yeah, definitely, and it's uh, yeah exactly hard hard thing to do with um with no features on the face like yeah. Mister Knight uh, and, and a, a static uh, Anubis face. Um, but look, I just want to get to that next this next page. Oh, just like some go. of the stuff coming what? up is just some of the most beautiful art I've seen for a long time. You just oh this is this is totally <laughs> for me it's totally whacked out because number one um, you've got the letters. Uh, on its side, so you're you're forced to move to to turn your whole the whole book, um, yeah, uh, to uh, landscape, um, and and what you get is a, a double uh, crossover here of of, of Mark, Mister Knight diving in to the other void, um, and it's peppered with uh, with sketches of, of Mark's memories. It seems um, ranging from as a young kid to um, just I guess asleep in bed, awake with thoughts, um, to also what looks like shock therapy. He's got like a yeah, mouth guard. Yeah, pills. He's got mm. yeah. And pills. Um, and this is a summation, I think, of, of the artwork. Um, it's way beyond Lemire. It's it's pure Smallwood and and Bel Air. Yeah. Um, and it's just brilliant, almost um, Shinkovich in in um in in style. If you look at the uh the incidental. Uh, images behind the mm-hmm. white Mr. Knight. Yeah, they've got that kind of sketchy um, yeah. Bill Yeah, there's Shinkovich a definite look. sketchiness to it, which adds to it being yeah. his memories. Mm-hmm. Um, obviously, Mr. Knight popping because it's massively black page. These glimpses of colour and then Mr. Yes. Knight going down in the white. Yeah. Is he swimming through it? He's, yeah, he's almost swimming through it. And yeah. he's the only one in white as well. He's the only like negative mm-hmm. um, in, in all this. But yeah, brilliant. Brilliant double page there. Um, it's just fantastic, and yeah, you, you you have to kind of see it in in hard copy form, I think, to really appreciate it as well. Mm. Um, I read it in digital, and it was fantastic as well. But um, it's not the same. just to turn the no, it isn't. Just to turn the page and see you've got these two full pages of it is really good. Um, and it gets crazier still. Like we get um, we get a couple of ads, which kind of <laughs> um, stops the. Uh, like we're something you miss on digital. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, um, and again we're still kept with this theme. Uh, it, it's it's artwork across the two pages, and we're meant to read it across the two pages, um, but it's totally upside down. So 
this is uh, this is whacked out stuff. Um, <laughs> I don't know about you. Did you try to read it upside down or did you turn the whole thing <laughs> upside down? I turned it over. I turned it around. You turn it over? Yeah, yeah. yeah. But you I have f- to re- read it from right to left. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, it's so cool. Um, yeah, sorry, you were about to say something? No, I was just saying like, yeah, it's just like, I think I started reading it upside down and went, nah, I'll turn it over. Like, come on. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, but this is brilliant. So I think what we have here is we have Mr. Knight. He's actually reached the other side, which would be the other void. Mm-hmm. Oh, sorry, the over void. Sorry. Yes. <laughs> the over void um, is, is where Anubis wants Mark to look for this something or someone that um, he has to reclaim to exchange for Crawley. So he comes out the other side. Um, and um, Connor, um, correct me if I'm wrong. This is pretty much how it is in Australia, right? So, so um, you, you go, you know, if you're from America and you travel and you go to Down Under, this is what it's like. We're all upside down. So and back to front. It makes total sense. And, you have to swim here. And you have to swim stuff. here as well. That's it. You have to kind of um, exchange something for someone else's soul to get here. But, uh, but uh, yes. Yeah, so anyway, Mr. Knight. Um, uh, he actually comes across a couple of the inhabitants who we don't see much of. They kind of run away, um, and he kind of checks his head uh, and proceeds to, I don't know, what is that? He he actually goes f- further into the land, or he, he drops into the sky, um, yeah, with a wump. Uh, and before you know it, he's actually in the cosmos again through what looks like water, and... Uh, and he comes up for air, upside down. <laughs> so uh, I know it's hard to describe, guys. How do you, how do you see it? Yeah, yeah. You have to be looking at him. You have to be reading this issue alongside this guy's with him falling with a wump and then. I think it's kind of. I down. think that even though it, it it does it backwards, I think you have to read it the other way around. Like he comes out of yeah. the watery sky. Oh, goes wump, okay, yeah. Oh, then, you were reading it that actually, way. Actually, that makes a lot more sense, yeah. Rebecca. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's not real. But that's so oh, weird, right. though, because, like... Yeah, you know, I think it's messing with you, because, like you said... It is messing with you. It's that Australian thing, no. Um, it, I, think it, I think it is trying to mess with you and say how disorienting it is, like, to oh, come out is. and everything being the wrong way round, and, but I think it's doing okay. it to you through the comic. Yeah. So everything's back to front, um, upside down. So you actually read this double page from the bottom first. Yes. So he actually gasps first. He goes through this water surface. Yes, yeah, so he's like come he out lands. the other side of whatever he was diving yeah. through. Yeah. Lands on yeah. this sand Lands planet. On the sand, on the right-hand side. And yeah. then as yeah. you move l- towards the left-hand side, he checks himself. He, uh, he looks at some, he sees some locals. Uh, he calls out to them. Yeah. Okay. That yeah. <laughs> that works. That works. <laughs> they're running away. He turns around to they're see run- what they're running away from, and boom. And Final boom. Page. Ah, yes. And boom. Oh, God, I, I forgot that this was upside down as well. <laughs> and, <laughs> well, see, because it doesn't it doesn't do this for digital, right? No, um, it doesn't. Digital you're actually, it corrects it all. Yeah. Yeah. yeah and that's I, what I'm reading from, so I'm getting this. Yeah. Yeah. And so I think you lose a lot of that actually. So. For any loonies out there who have been reading this digital, um, Try and get it's, hold it's of important it, to it's note quite the a last different couple experience. of experience. It's a very different experience because, yeah, single issues or trade, I'm sure as well, yeah. Yeah, will show sure. that this is is upside down. So your last page reveal is is upside down and uh, and it's totally whacked out as well. It's got Moon Knight going, oh, oh my, you know, oh bleep, <laughs> uh, and there's a guy on a giant scarab beetle uh egyptian looking but obviously someone from the overvoid with a floating yep. pyramid in the background um ready flies. to yeah massive dragon dragon flies. uh yeah looking over him um just wary of this new stranger in town so that ends issue 10 um what a ride what yeah. a ride yeah i looked up so. whether like the massive um whether these massive scarab beetles were a part of Egyptian mythology, but uh, typing in giant bugs Egyptian nah, didn't ugh, bring me much. It, it gave me five things dung beetles do with a piece of poo, so... Do <laughs> <laughs> you want to know what's going on with the dung beetles? And why? <laughs> that's a thing. Dig in. Uh, yeah. 
<laughs> yeah, right, right in. Let us uh, ask us. Um, and Connor will be more than happy <laughs> I'll to. I'll put them in the show anyway. notes. It'll be good. Put, put them in the show notes. Yeah. yeah. But um, no, that was a. Uh, that what was a amazing. Yeah. That was really weird. Um, but yeah, what was I about to say? I was about to say, oh, Scarab Beetles. They were featured in um in in Brendan Fraser's The Mummy, though, right? Well, guys... Scarab Beetles do feature in a lot of Egyptian. Oh yeah, stuff. they're definitely yeah. a yeah. big yeah. part of Egyptian mythology. Just yeah. not massive, I suppose. Regular size. It's just not giant ones. Yeah. <laughs> so um, so with this issue, were you? I guess I guess what were your initial thoughts? Were you um confused by this um, was it was it um elucidating for you as, as to as to more of mark's past or um what were your thoughts going through it when you first read it uh i think coming off what had just come before which was very confusing um mm. it, this kind of felt like right now we're going to get into the actual story you want to tell like you've done all this scene setting and you've you've got him where mentally where you want him to be now we're ready to go back, look at some of this, where these other personalities came from, some of the relationship with his family, and then move forward to what's going on. So I find it a nice kind of grounding into this is kind of the second, like the last third of the cycle mm-hmm. of the um, story. Mm-hmm. Yeah. How, how about you, Connor? Yeah, I was um, I was much the same. It's sort of this. It was, it, like, yeah, I don't know, it was crazy, but yeah, it was definitely sort of, you know, it worked in two ways, just sort of opening up this crazy new sort of past for Mark, but also at the same time, you know, it, yeah, it's definitely sort of funneled us to the end point, like almost the gates, mm. the gates of Conchu, the final conflict before before we get in. So yeah, it was almost, yeah, it definitely felt like a coming together, like, yeah, this is the final destination, this is where this book is all led, this... Mm. Yeah, I um, I think as we mentioned before as well, Connor. I think um, what Lemire has done really well is um, with these three arcs, he's he's created bigger, bigger acts like you know three acts to a, a whole a greater story that he wants to tell, and I, I think it's um, yeah, I think that this this introduction to um, death and and birth uh, is a really good. Um, introduction to to the final act as well it kind of gives glimpses to um to mark specter's past as well kind of you get you get to understand him a little more as well um and, and you see that with with the, the these subsequent issues as well as as we'll dive right into mark's past um but also uh, it, it returns to uh what we saw in the first arc which um is the the over void and the other void um, so we, we return to Crawley and uh, Anubis as well. Um, and, and Mark's uh, mission, obviously, to, to, to kill Conchu is, is now kind of galvanised. Um, so, yeah, it, it, it kind of sets it up for a really good third act. Um, what I thought, though, um, and it's great, you know, Greg Smallwood, brilliant art, and Geordie Blair, as we mentioned in, in this review, uh, really great artwork, what I um, was thinking, though, was that from incarnations with that massive team of artists of Wilfredo Torres, Franca Villa, and Stoko, um, I thought um, it was really hard to top that. So yeah. uh, I'm thinking, like, what they do like now for this, like what we saw with this craziness was um, was was trying to, okay, um, let's see how we can kind of keep the readers interested Um and and they certainly did it with this totally whacked out playing with um, perspectives and playing with uh, you know things upside down and back to front. Mm-hmm. I think that was really good. But uh, yeah, for me, I, f- I found that it was uh, a direct I think reaction to oh, t- um, good way of yeah it. T- yeah to to how how I don't know. I, I was very impressed with all those other artists in the last arc. Just how to kind of like okay, so what do we do now? Kind of thing. Um, yeah, uh, but uh, it was a very solid, very solid issue, um, mm-hmm. a- and um, you can't you can't fault Smallwood for, no. for what is that? Or Jordy Belair as well. It's just um, just amazing what they've done. Um, the colours, yeah. just especially however Belair managed that in the you know last four pages, well yeah. six pages really, mm-hmm. hmm. crazy. 
and we ha- we have an issue here where there was no like physical conflict basically at all. Yeah. Uh, a lot of it was uh, ne- negotiation um, between Moon Knight, uh, Mister Knight, uh, conversation with with Mister Knight and Gina. Um, you have the past with, uh, with just an insight of, of a young Mark. So a lot of it was a lot of it was uh, information as a reader that you, mm-hmm. you kind of get from it. Um, but with the last few pages being just um, you know just kind of taking you by surprise almost. Yeah. Uh, and I think that's what really shocks you because um, although as you say, Rebecca, uh, it's weird. Like you, you get really uh, involved in that conversation with and. You, uh, Anubis and Mr. Mm. Knight, uh, despite the fact that they both look, you know, like comic <laughs> characters, uh, you get the past of Mark and his father, um, but uh, you get totally, um, um, you know, ambushed by uh, by these Egyptian-looking people on on a, on a planet um, by being turned upside down and back to front and having giant scarab beetle, beetles. Uh, yeah, it was it was a real a real um, sudden turn I thought towards the end. Mm-hmm. I was yeah, say, I was just I don't know, just even the even right from that first start up, the first write up when they're like saying the task is going to be to kill Konshu. I mean, <laughs> like I'll read yeah. any, you know, if if that's where we're going, I'll read anything. But this is just beautiful, <laughs> and like there's insights into it's just it goes from really colourful childhood to this mm. amazing cosmic and like you're right the upside down pages and it's just it, it starts looking really grounded like yeah. in the, the first shot is a picture of the ground yeah and like you know and it's just and 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 like the last shot the sand is almost the same color as the pavement in chicago and it's just like mm. uh, there's just so many beautiful details oh, well, yeah. it's pink there's a lot, and even that first summary page has even got the blue and pink split <laughs> it's just yeah. so much detail in it. It's just I I would I I, oh, I want everyone to have to yeah. read this comic. <laughs> I think um I think uh, Smallwood uh, has picked a really good um, picture for the cover as well. I think that was a standout for me. One of the oh, one of the images one of from the issue. Favorites. So yeah. Uh, yeah, like simplified um, for the cover, but w- when when Mark sees Conchu just outside the Doctor's door, um, that was a big moment, I thought. And yeah. um, and in, on on the yeah. cover, he's drawing a spa- he's just drawing planets and stars. And a uh, yeah, spaceship. he is too. Yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah, no, that was great. And and this this um, heralds, I guess, the the, the um, the next arc of um, of design. I mean, I guess if you put all the Moon Knight covers together. Um, you yeah. see there's a, a cohesion between them all. Yes, um, which is something yeah. I did not spot the first time round, that they mm, go from black it, backgrounds to whites with a third of greys in the middle. Yeah, which is really, uh, really nice, uh, you know, as a set. So, um, yeah, Connor, any any other any other thoughts on, um, no, on the Overvoid? or covered it really well. I, I wouldn't even know what to add. Um, yeah, it's just fantastic. It's just... You know, just when you you just you just don't know what to expect with this title. I suppose yeah. any sort of expectations of what you're going to get after the end of last issue is totally just crushed here. And you're like you have three very distinct segments with his past uh, mm-hmm. in the um, other void and then the over void. Just yeah. just three complete different parts that you know you'll return to here. And you know what do you expect from there? Oh no, it's crazy. Yeah, we don't know. Well, well this arc is a, is a bit well, longer. I guess we know. Uh, we've read it. But... Well, yeah, exactly. <laughs> and uh, uh, Midnight Loonies uh, will know for sure. But uh, th- this is a bit of a longer arc, so five parts to mm-hmm. it. Um, but really kicks off to a, a great start. Um, if we go to Crescent Darts, guys, um, I'll ask Rebecca first. What would you give Take this out of five Crescent Darts? Oh, I love this one so much. Mm. This is getting a, a proper five from me. I love yeah, that. Yeah. I love that. Lovely. I can't. I mean, like, I, I'd love to say, oh no, four point five. Give it some chance to. Take. <laughs> but I, I just, I don't see anything wrong with this one. Like, I, I think there's other ones I could pick. Oh well, I wish it just have this. But this is just a. I, for me, it is a perfect issue. Mm. Now, how about you, Connor? Uh, why are you guys even coming to me for reviews? Um, I'm a big. I'm, 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 I'm a big positive boy. I'm not sure what I'm doing with these scores, but uh. 
it's just faultless. A big five out of five. I'm so excited five for what of... comes next. I was waiting for you go up to seven. Seven no, out of five. No, we'll wait to the end. We'll wait till the, <laughs> we get a bit more into this arc. We're getting there. Don't worry. <laughs> now you've let um, him know he can. Oh, no. <laughs> that's the problem. Yeah, oh, you know, that's here. The, I'm going yeah. at it. <laughs> the cat's out of the bag. Um, oh, I'd have to totally agree with you guys. Um, uh, and, and especially uh, what we mentioned before about uh, reading it in, in physical form format. Um, I, I found it totally because uh, because admittedly I had read it previously numerous times on digital, mm-hmm. um, and as you mentioned, Rebecca, it, it corrects everything, so um, uh, so you're left with a different impression. But reading it uh, in physical form uh, and having everything upside down and uh, around it, it was really good. And uh, the return to the other void with Jordi Belair's colours. Uh, uh, look, I'm a, I'm a very colors orientated person like with works of art and stuff if colors are good you kind of got me and and belair really really does smash it with um with the cosmic other void aspect to it um so uh, i can't fault it and 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 with um jeff lemire as well uh the writing i think is 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 so tight and you still get that sense that um he's he's giving you snippets here and there like the past Mm -hmm. um he knows exactly what he's doing. He's not he's not overplaying his hand or, or giving you too much or too less. He uh, he knows what he, he wants to tell you. Um, and um, having said that, and having because I've just recently read the subsequent issues as well, uh, it just it just makes it all the more apparent how how tight the story is. So uh, this issue is yeah really really good. Um, so yeah, I'll give I'll give it a five. Crescent darts um, out of five. So, so there you go, loonies. Um, if you haven't got it yet, please pick it up. <laughs> um, issue ten. If we haven't persuaded you now, I I don't know what we'll be able to persuade you. Uh, it's a really good issue, and it's a good uh, jumping on point. Uh, actually, that's a good question. If if you were if you were to pick up issue ten, um, Rebecca and Connor, as a non Moon Knight fan, um, just someone just wanders in, wants to start reading comics. Would this be appropriate, or would you be totally put off by it, by it? It's more appropriate than some issues, I would say. <laughs> like, because well, it I... starts off in that... Like, it sets it up very easily. I mean, yeah. it's the sort of thing I imagine that if I'd never read a comic before, it would at least yeah. have me intrigued, and it would at least yeah. have me um, seeing some of the potentials for, for what the kind of stories a comic can tell. And that's part of the beauty of it starting off in a very grounded... We've all seen tropes of people with um, dissociative um, identity Mm. disorder in in many Mm. films and things like that. We kind of get that. That's a... Like, we... um, I think I would probably assume he gained powers at some point. There's this big jump. (laughs) Like, where you don't really know the jump between Mr. Knight and and Mark. Um, Oh, yes. Yeah. And... Maybe the conversation with Gina is probably the most confusing thing in it, actually, if you hadn't read comics, mm. uh-huh, because it yeah. references back to the asylum and stuff like that. But yeah, I'd give it to someone and say, here, have a look, especially the hard copy with the whole turning around and mm. yeah. look what happened. It, certainly... I think the only thing you'd have to sort of, like, I, I think the only thing you miss when you start here is the fact, like, you have all this backstory, but you wouldn't understand that Moon Knight is a hero that has several yeah. identities. Like, yeah. he is just, like, it is really just does seem like the one identity. So the past doesn't have quite as much impact on the present. But I suppose if you describe that, you could probably give it to someone. Yeah. I'm okay. sure they'd have questions afterwards. But oh, yeah. You, you, could, yeah. <laughs> you could see oh, no, how they went with it. Yeah, I'm just um, trying to compare it to the other part ones of the other arcs. I, I, think, I think issue one is definitely probably the strongest. Like, you know, obviously if you had issue one... Uh, I think it's issue six. six. I think yeah, issue, issue one would be quite confusing though if you have no background to the character. Mm. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um. Yeah, I guess so. Yeah. But issue then, six. having said that, like, it's not. I mean, if they carried on reading it, it, you know, it would fill in some of the. Stuff. Yeah. It would yeah, you definitely yeah. give someone the first trade, not the issue, and just be like, read it all, please. Just yes. don't stop at any time. <laughs> that's right 
Yeah, it, it definitely works. Um, yeah, trade wise as well. Like even with this one, the third one that's just come out, um, you, you just want to jump in straight away. Um, but yeah, no, no, interesting because it, it is um, definitely advertised as a as a num- on the front cover, a number one. You know, yeah. you know how Marvel oh, do that. True. Um, yeah. Try to try to draw you in, um, and number ones, you know, sell big. Um, so it's a good jumping on point, uh, but I think so. I think it does. I think it does mm. work well because it, it starts with a young Mark, and you, you do get a bit of background. And yeah, Gina, Gina's conversation's probably a bit bit weird, um, but then you kind of just left with a ride at the end. Um, uh, similar to like this whole kind of series where it seems to be quite positive, where people just don't know what's happening, but it's just yeah, <laughs> this is pretty cool as it is. So yeah, yeah. I, I, I think um, I'm definitely going to try it out, like, maybe just give it to someone who hasn't read Moon Knight before and just be like, what did you think? Yeah. yeah. I want to try that now as well. <laughs> yeah, that would be a good social experiment. I might... Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah we're I, all I, I let's just do that. It could be fine. <laughs> yeah. next, time, next time Rebecca's on, we'll, we'll report on our findings. Yeah. Yes. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give it to my say, partner. Oh. I'm going to dig out issue Ooh. 10 later and say, read this. Yeah, I might, I might, yeah, pass on to Eve, see what she thinks. <laughs> um, let's <laughs> see what happens. Sociological experiment. <laughs> um, yeah, great. So all positive uh, again uh, for for Moon Knight number ten, uh, and we're edging closer towards um, the towards the end of yeah, Lemire's run. Although I mean, this is only part one of five, so we've still got four good issues to go. Um, so yeah, so next phase, um, next episode. Uh, I don't know. Connor, what do we have? What do we have? He says as he uh, brings <laughs> time to pull up the next issue. On our next phase, we'll be doing Lemire's <laughs> Moon Knight Volume Eight, Issue Eleven, Death and Birth, Part Two or Five, and then something, something, a bit, something a bit interesting. A little the Defenders, mm-hmm. Volume One, going right back. The Defenders, mm-hmm. 1972. Issue 47, Night Moves. Nice. With, a, uh, with that uh, character spotlight on Bushman coming. Yeah, yeah, well, we still haven't thought. I mean, we'll, we'll see how it goes. Um, I don't yeah. know. Uh, we'll slot in Bushman uh, somewhere. Yeah. But, uh, but I think it's very important to, to kind of spotlight. Um, yeah. I'd like to do him just before before Bemis is run anyway. Mm-hmm. Um yeah, but uh, yeah, a couple of good issues there. Uh, obviously, part two of Lemire's run, uh, a bit of a classic one with the Defenders. Um, Connor and I have something cooking. Uh, we've got Ooh. things, uh, cut some cards close to our chest. Um, so we'll let you loonies know. Um, but it should be a pretty exciting uh, episode next week as well. But before we go, before we sign off, obviously we've still got plenty of things just to talk about uh, for our. Uh, a spectacle um, segment, which uh, is just basically about shout-outs um, from from fellow loonies and uh, and fellow podcasters. Uh, we had a question from Wayne from the Facebook uh, Into the Night group. Um, and uh, Connor, do you, do you want to read this one out? Uh, Wayne had a couple of really good questions, which I'm hoping we can kind of discuss. Yep. Hey, guys. A bit, a bit busy. He says, lately with work and gearing up for... Th- 300th episode of my own podcast, which is mm-hmm. uh, Courtside, spelt C-R-T-S-D-E, uh, all about the latest news on NBA and basketball in general. So if that's mm-hmm. your thing, check it out. We're up to 300 Yeah, episodes. definitely. Again, we'll have that in the post, uh, in the uh, sh- in the show notes. Hmm. It got up to 300 episodes, guys. You can be assured yeah. of quality. Yep. Get in exactly. on Exactly. Uh, so I'll try and get on the Facebook page a bit more. Into the Night, Moon Knight fan base is where you can find that. A bit more once the Madness is over. Now the question. Mm-hmm. Oh, no. Well, he thanks us. He says, firstly, I want to say I've been really enjoying Into the Night podcast. So keep the great episodes coming. Thanks, Wayne. We love you. Thanks, we Wayne. We love you a lot. We do. <laughs> All right, so here's the question. I like the rest of the Moonies. He love our hero, Moon Knight. But sometimes I wonder if he suffers from not having a strong adversary to battle. While his rogue gar- gallery is quite unique, the Black Spectre, Bushman, Morpheus, etc., and some may argue that Moon Knight's greatest adver- adversary is him himself, or even Conchu, he certainly lacks a recognisable arch villain, someone who shakes him to his core. Who would you like to see in the next run of Moon Knight? A new villain? Maybe a retcon of an older villain? Or does M- M- Moon Knight just need a new angle? 
On the last run, Lemire did a fantastic job tackling the mental health struggle on Moon Knight, but do we need a break? Uh, sorry, a lot, of an- uh, a lot to answer, but I'd love to hear your thoughts. Peace. Uh, he yeah. actually... Oh. oh, sorry, go on. Oh, I'll do, I'll do his own little answer after, I think. Oh, okay, yep. Yeah, um, yeah no, no, thanks, Wayne. Um, that's cool. A lot of... Uh, yeah, a lot of interesting questions there. Always good to, to, to have a chat at the comic store. Um, but yeah, uh, look, I'll, I'll, I'll open it to Rebecca first. Who do you think um, would be, say, the, the arch nemesis of Moon Knight at this point? Uh, I always think of Bushman. Mm-hmm. But um, I, I agree that he could do with some other bad guys. And I'm guessing the yeah. truth is going to be mm. uh, an interesting yeah. dangle there for us because I think uh, possibly that's a fairly clear gap in his um, in his sort of thing is that he doesn't have those very I mean he has he does have unique rogues but they're not these sort of big I don't I mean yeah. obviously Morpheus is huge but you know like I, I'd like mm. to see him have more of a rogues gallery and I think um, yeah. the truth's interesting because it sort of taps into some of the other Egyptian mythology um yeah. i think we've talked before about it'd be interesting to see any kind of bast things not necessarily as a as a mm-hmm. antagonist but as a well actually maybe as an antagonist not as a baddie um uh, yeah i think it could do with being um widened now now he's kind of established if they are ever going to do anything with him bigger into the mcu now's the time to sort of start defining him for the modern era yeah, oh, yeah, definitely. Um, yeah, I'm with you. I think Bushman's probably the biggest one, but oh, mm. I get a sense, and I understand where Wayne's coming from. I think there are a lot of adversaries that are, are big and up there, but there's not one that you can yeah. really define as the like the Joker to the Batman. Yeah. Like, mm. There's no, there's no defining one. Don't bring one. up Batman. No, no, sorry. <laughs> bad Ray, bad. Bad. <laughs> so, so um, I think, um, I think, uh, yeah, he definitely needs something, and I think that's what Bemis is really going to try and fix um, from from the interview interviews that we've read in the articles about him um, uh, creating this big bad in the truth. Uh, I, I would say also conchu and himself uh, as wayne was saying as as being the biggest adversary but there's only so much that you can do mm. with that and i think lemire has really kind of um has, has really kind of uh, pushed that as far as it could i mean i think it would be very difficult to try and top what lemire has done especially with conchu i mean conchu has always been there as the, the devil on the shoulder as well but i think lemire has done it really well um and, and he's certainly been a very um like one of the main villains for Moon Knight, but uh, yeah, he, he kind of needs he kind of needs someone that recurs often enough. Um, I'd agree with one of our um, our loonies. Uh, I think it's Dylan who mentioned it. I think Randall Spectre, Moon Knight uh, mm. Mark's brother, uh, could potentially be, but we just haven't seen him nearly enough. Yeah. Definitely want to see him come back. back yeah, <laughs> yeah, because I mean it's so cool. Like you got Mark who is a bit unstable, then you got his brother who's, you know, madder, madder than anything else, you know, and, and, and a psychotic as well. So he just, he'd make a perfect arch enemy. But, um, yeah, we haven't seen him. Uh, how about you, Connor? What do, what do you think? Uh, yeah, I definitely feel like, you know, this is Bemis's, you know, reaction to this history of without mm. uh, an arch uh, nemesis in... Um, Horus or the truth? I'm not sure which one out of those two will almost become the big arch nemesis. He's been kind of unclear about which one of them will take the spotlight because you know one of them obviously has the first stuff, but whether they'll stick around. But yeah, I think yeah. I think uh, there's some very important wording here that um yeah um I think uh, Wayne's point of someone who shakes him to his core is probably the most important. Like it's got to be yeah. someone reoccurring but still manages to horrify Moon Knight every time, and it's just such a such an opposite of his ideals, which is what I hope we see in Horace or the Truth, as Horace being an yeah. envoy of the light and that oppressive flame we see on we saw on that very night. But I think uh, uh, if uh, if I could see someone from his own rogues gallery take a bigger stage, I think I would love probably Randall Spector or um yeah 
Is Black, Black Spectre? Black Spectre, I really like yeah. Those, and I like the fact yeah. that Mantle has been passed around, as we saw in issue six of uh, the Ellis run. And yeah. I think just those two of such sort of such direct opposites of Moon Knight. I'd really love to see them come back. Because, I mean, you know, Bushman's is probably the most recognizable, but I was checking through that yeah. the other day in preparation for, you know, this setup and um, for our character spotlight. But I think he's only been in, like, 12 to 15 issues over the years of Moon Knight. So Moon Knight yeah. even then doesn't even really have that that proper arch nemesis. So yeah. I'm hoping Bemis does pull through that and we see something crazy because, yeah. oh boy. Yeah, I think Bushman, um, because he has that intrinsic historic um, connection with Moon Knight, you, you know, when Moon Knight was, uh, you know, uh, when Mark Spector was resurrected. Uh, so he has that tie with the origins of Moon Knight that kind of makes him, uh, you know, the arch nemesis. But as you say, he hasn't popped up nearly enough and he's been dead for a long time. He's been resurrected. He was resurrected in Vengeance of the Moon Knight, um, but that really wasn't kind of him. Uh, he, he's been a... He's basically he was Conchu in the in the Houston run. Um, he was just uh, Conchu was just masquerading as as Bushman. So he really has been kind of out of action for a long time. Uh, Black Spectre, um, I think, is good. But he's a bit of a weird one because um, apart from the name, I can't really see and, and the color him being black and not white. I can't really see a, a, a direct contrast or a tie with with him um, and Moon Knight. Um, but he's definitely a big hitter. Um, because he, he comes back again and again, and um, and he, he's featured in the uh, uh, the Houston or the Benson run, and, and as well as the Ellis run, as you mentioned. Um, i just thinking as well, I'd, I'd like to see also the profile. I think the profile, will be, he's a relatively new villain. Um, uh, he was featured a lot in the Houston run as well. Uh, he's a bit more crafty. He's not, you know, he can't go toe-to-toe with, um, with Moon Knight, but... Uh, his, I think it's a mutant ability to read anyone. It's kind of kind of like Karnak, yeah. but he he gets a whole picture. I think he would be uh, quite an interesting um, uh, villain. Uh, but again, we haven't seen him nearly enough. Um, the only other person who would be like a, a villain slash antihero would be Jack Russell, the werewolf. I think. Um, if oh, we go yeah. Back to, yeah, that'd be to, cool. To cl- yeah, to, to, to classic um, the classic uh, moon and and werewolf. Um, he would be good, but um, I've got a soft spot for for Jack Russell because he's kind of like the Hulk. You know, he doesn't really mean what he does. Um, it's just he's at the mercy of this curse that he's got. So um, yeah, so there's not and really the first a defined... dog I ever owned for myself personally. Oh. Was, was it Jack go- Russell? No, no, it was going to oh. be a Jack Russell. We went to a farm. Uh-huh. we went to a farm to buy a Jack Russell, and I ended up they'd all gone, and I was devastated as a child. Oh. So we got a border collie instead. <laughs> Ah, yeah. oh, border collies are good. But it, yeah. it was it was a great decision and it was a fantastic yeah. dog. But I went there oh. desperate for Jack Russell, so I will always quite uh, like the name. So yeah, Is it a yeah. Hmm? <laughs> Did they all just like disappear, ready to fight? Yes. Yeah. Jack Russell oh, okay, disappeared. Cool. Good. Yeah. <laughs> I, I actually, I actually, um, I told uh, Eve today, um, about uh, Jack Russell, like uh-huh. the werewolf, and she's going, "What? Goes, Isn't Jack Russell?" <laughs> Isn't Jack Russell a dog? I was going, oh, yeah, no. but I think it was kind of like a bit of a play on yeah, you know, back in yeah. the day. Went, well, that's just ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> she has got a lot to learn about comic naming conventions. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. They kind of summed it up a little. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, Connor, you, you were mentioning uh, Wayne goes on to actually pitch an idea. Yeah, some 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 pretty cool. Uh, Wayne says... Uh, Randomly, I've been thinking of other Marvel villains that might be entertaining to see interact with Moon Knight, like borrowing the Purple Man from Jessica Jones. He got smacked in the face. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Let me paint a quick picture. Purple Man sits with uh, Elisa Warsan, Mark Spector's psychiatrist, is that his name? Probably. And learns of the secrets of uh, both Mark and Conchu. This leads to a deadly, deadly web of destruction throughout New York, causing Mark to bargain with Conchu to open a mental doorway to his other personalities to show, so he may shred the Purple Man's hold and unleash a little Egyptian god payback. Any deal with Conchu, though, shall come with a price, and how much will Mark sacrifice? Mm. Yeah, it's interesting. Yeah, yeah it's, um, Purple Man's a great villain, I think. Mm. Um, and he's quite um, highly powered as well. Mm-hmm. He's, he's, a, he's, a, he's a real tough one. Um and uh, I loved how he was done on Netflix um, with uh, Kristen Ritter and, and Jessica Jones. Um, but he's 
he's quite a he's quite a powerful villain. Um, and I, I'd imagine that writers would find him hard to to write. Mm. Um, only because how do you like, how do you stop him? Someone that kind of just can persuade anyone like just by being kind of near them. Uh, but it's it's really a, a interesting dynamic between um, him and someone who's mentally unstable. I think mm. that would be pretty. Yeah, that'd be pretty interesting. Um, yeah, it's definitely an interesting idea. I don't know if Bendis will give him up right now. Did he just uh, show up? Was it this week that the latest issue of Jessica Jones coming out, or another? It, it was this week. Oh, yeah, that is, so oh yes, yeah, the yeah, he's Purple Man. Yeah, mm-hmm. I haven't read it yet. No spoilers. No spoilers. <laughs> no, I didn't read it yet. No. I just know he's on. Uh, All right, the yeah, but yeah, is... it's well, they, they revealed in the last issue that he. Yes, he wasn't but, in prison yeah. anymore, so yeah, yeah that's that's yeah. really all you need to know. He's back out there again. Um, yeah, but I, I don't so, know. It did make me think like, well, one of the things Wayne's asking is, what other baddies that are already out there that aren't Moon Knight mm. ones would we like to see him go up against? Oh. And that's really tricky. <laughs> that is very tricky. Um, oh, there were some time I had all these other ones lined up, you know, because. Um, the whole mentally unst. Well, you know, obviously we've seen him come against um, Bullseye, which is pretty cool. Mm-hmm. Um, he could potentially be because Moon Knight, yeah, 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 he could potentially be like an adversary for Moon Knight. Um, yeah, it's it's a, that's a tough one. I don't know. Um, Taskmaster. Yeah. I'd like Task- to see yeah. everyone go up against Taskmaster. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. That, that was great the last time. Uh, yeah. Batrock. <laughs> oh, no, bless him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Batrock happened. I'd like to. Oh, uh, God, I just. I almost said the sentence I'd like to see him come up against Gwenpool. Please <laughs> shoot me now. But I actually would. Because I. Yeah? Yeah, because her shtick is that she's read all the comics. She's like, she was a Marvel yeah. fangirl. And, like, so she knows who yeah. everyone's um, other identities are. Yeah. And uh, I think it. I mean, like, she's not a baddie although apparently her future self is so we can kind of count her um yes i'm the only person who reads gwenpool whatever <laughs> um but i think it would be kind of interesting to have her come up against moon Knight. he's like because she's also quite violent because she knows she's yeah. in a comic book and get away with it <laughs> yeah um, so she breaks a fourth wall as well like similar she, to deadpool but in yeah. a in that other different way like she's explaining to batrock how his name comes from the french for this and you know it's like it's, it's uh, quite sweet yeah, yeah. and she goes up to and like miles comes up to her spider-man and she goes oh hi miles and he's like how do you know who i am <laughs> um and like because i actually think anyone who'd read the comics would be a little bit scared of mark like i'd like mm. her to meet i'd like her to yeah, meet him as one of his like yeah to meet him as one of his other person like to meet him as say mark or jake um not jake um to meet him as Stephen. But to yeah. know all this stuff about him and just be like, ooh, that'd yeah. be, it'd be very odd and weird and kind of interesting. Yes. Yeah, in Gwenpool's shoes, yeah, you'd be freaked out. I would just like this... go, all right, I've yeah. got to go, bye. And like yeah, that would be the yeah. end of the issue. See you. Oh, totally <laughs> like, with you. Yeah, I don't want to have yeah, anything yeah. to do with you. <laughs> um, totally. Yeah, I, I only I only just... um. I was listening to uh, Vengeance Unbound, a Ghost Rider podcast. Uh-huh. I was listening to it. Anyone loonies listening to it out there? But anyway, they were going through Gwenpool as well. Um, and it's the first time I've heard of it, how, like, she's a, a comic book reader, but, yeah, how it's kind of all meta like that. Mm-hmm. And I, I think that's actually a really brilliant idea. Um, so it's, it kind of makes me want to read Gwenpool. I just wish they um, hadn't and, called and, her that. Like, I just, you know, like, because it, it, <laughs> yeah. it brings all those kind of Deadpool connotations yeah, and makes yeah, it and, yeah. and spider gwen con- and it's just like you've just made it sound like the most tired character and it's actually kind of fun mm. yeah she de- she definitely did well in um uh that was one of the other issues i read uh deadpool kills the marvel universe yeah, again yeah um uh, she did she had a good role in that as mm-hmm. well i thought um, I don't know. What did you did you What did you think of that last issue? I thought it kind of fizzled it a fizzled, little. Yeah, I, I <laughs> yeah. thought it was a very disappointing ending. Yeah, which is a shame. And and no Mooney. We were hoping for Mooney to arrive, yeah. but he uh, he bought it in that first couple of issues and he stayed dead. So. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. So uh, anyway, um, so Wayne goes on to say um, the story could play out in black and white. I think this is a good visual though, black and white with a dash of purple. Um, Yes, we're being sands of colour in the climax. I think that's pretty cool. Yeah. Um, 
And uh, just finally, Wayne says, maybe I should put something together for Inktober. Uh, for and I just want to yeah. say, yeah, I just, just want to say, uh, Rebecca, Connor, and I totally agree, Wayne. You should <laughs> get onto it. Um, and please do, because uh, Wayne's posted up some Moon Knight stuff before. Um, and, and other loonies have posted up Moon Knight stuff. And uh, it, they're really great to see. So please... Um, Post up as much as you can, and especially Inktober, which is a which is a thing. Yeah, I, I didn't realize it's mm-hmm. it's uh, a yeah, it, is is it for October. artists or yeah, because oh, it's, okay. it's people working with it's supposed to be like non uh, non digital art. Oh, okay, okay. So actual, yeah, no, some really yeah, yeah some really great art out, out there. there. Mm, yeah, I did. I, it. Yeah, I came across uh, Chris Sumney's one, um, a few of his. Yeah. Brilliant! So, yeah. so, he's doing Batman uh, for all of his. He's doing Batman, yeah, yeah. yeah. Looks really good. And uh, Mr. Smallwood's uh, doing it. Yeah. Oh yes, I saw Lobo. Selling all his art as well. He does, doesn't he? Isn't mm-hmm. he? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Which is good. Um, I, I asked Mr. Small, Smallwood about. Um, I think he was doing some art. I asked him about a Mooney one, but he said not, not yet. He said not <laughs> so, yet. So. Yeah. Not yet, so hopefully, <laughs> hopefully sometime uh, in, in the pipelines. Um, also, as well, I just want to shout out on Spectacle, Wayne reviewed our Facebook page. Uh, cool. Thanks a lot, Wayne. Um, so he, cool. he mentioned, uh, sure, there might not be any other Moon Knight podcasts out there, but that doesn't mean this isn't the only Moon Knight podcast you should be listening to. Congrats on a fantastic show, guys. So uh, thank you very much. We do appreciate thank the you, review. Wayne. So, Yes, exactly. Thank you, Wayne. Please get them in uh, if you if you want, um, <laughs> you know. Um, and we also got another review by Rebecca. Thank you, Rebecca. I only just, yeah. I just, I only just <laughs> noticed you could review on Facebook, so I didn't have ah. anything witty to write. I just did start. No, but, yeah, five-star rating, um, you know, we're going to take that to the bank. Uh, thank you so much. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, yeah, so please, loonies, um, if you can, uh, tell your friends. Um, just get on there and, and uh, review them. So that's great. Um, we've only got just a couple more things, guys. Uh, oh, before uh, spectacle wrap up. shout out to my cat mm-hmm. who went to the room and meowed ah. and kind of fell asleep and didn't interrupt the podcast again. Well Big done. shout out. Oh. Yeah, thanks for the sleep. Well done. In in editing, I'm going to try to amplify uh, <laughs> the cat and the building, so, so we really get it because uh, I really do. Yeah, it was great. It was great to hear. <laughs> uh, Larky didn't turn up again. No, Rebecca, she went or... off and went to sleep. Oh, she was not okay. Very thematic. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> or maybe maybe next episode we can get yeah. her to to, <laughs> yeah. to you know say a few things. Yeah. Um, so yeah, just a couple of other things. Uh, again, uh, as Connor mentioned before, um, please Shout check out, out Wayne's. Cat. Sorry. <laughs> Go on. So, oh, to our cat. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh yeah. I've had to lock all the doors to keep Macy out here, so <laughs> <laughs> he'll be keep on. He'll cry. Oh gosh, he cries every six o'clock in the morning. So <laughs> bad enough of that. Um, so anyway, Wayne's podcast. Um, yeah, please check it out. Called Courtside C R T S D E podcast. Uh, we'll put it in the show notes as well, uh, a link to their Podbean uh, um, page. Uh, yeah, and as Conda mentioned, uh, everything to do with NBA and basketball, so check it out. Please do. Also, uh, a last shout-out as well. I uh, finally got uh, the Moon Knight hoodie uh, ordered in July from Destructo Disc Design, so thank you so much, guys. Um, I posted up a picture there on Facebook and Instagram, uh, and it, I just love it. It's great. It's warm and it's, uh, you know, it's Moon Nighty, uh, but it's not too Moon Nighty, so, <laughs> so, you know, you can still, you know, just wear it, um, you know, without it having a full on insignia on there. Uh, but it's, uh, fantastically designed. So thank you guys. Again, in our show notes, we'll put it there, um, a link to their page. So they do really good designs for hoods and, uh, and t-shirts and they do anything from uh, comic based stuff to uh, to manga um, stuff so uh, really really cool designs um, so yeah check it out well um, guys I think that's uh, that's about it for for mm. this episode thank you so much Rebecca um, it's, it's another a pleasure. <laughs> another oh. long one but it's, it's always always good to have you on so I'm hoping we can, um, can get you on again some other time yeah. Um are you are you appearing on any other podcasts soon? Uh, I don't know. We're still 
We're, there's the Immortal Lion Fist podcast, yes. and we may be recording that today, or it depends. Ooh, awesome. I'm, I'm going out all day tomorrow, so it depends. If they record yes. tomorrow, I won't be mm. on it, and if they record today, I might be. So, who knows? Uh, okay. Ah, oh, great. Well, uh, Looney, just keep your ears out <laughs> for the Immortal Iron Fist podcast. <laughs> really good, um, really good podcast as well. Um, yay, great stuff. Well, uh, as always, um, you can catch us uh, on various things, Connor. Uh, various things that I don't have in front of me. <laughs> uh, you can find us. Uh, you can email us at uh, moonlightpodcast on gmail dot com. Thoughts opinions, reviews, anything mm-hmm. you want us to read on, add on the show or answer a question like Wayne totally do. Uh, you've probably found us from here, but if not, we are on Into the Night uh, podcast.wordpress.com. We have a Facebook page, uh, www.facebook.com slash ITK Moon Knight. An amazing group with uh, loonies mm. coming every day. Great discussion yes. going on. Always happening. Facebook.com slash groups slash into the night uh you can search as well into the night a moon night fan base uh our twitter hand uh twitter handle is uh at <laughs> Moon Knight. uh we're on instagram tumblr and youtube search for into the night a moon night podcast uh we're on all good podcast catches all of them not all of them maybe but a lot of them <sighs> most of them i think yeah be there yeah fantastic um yeah great stuff so uh yeah, keep on keep on reading Moon Knight comics. Um, we'll be back again. Uh, we're all winding. Uh, we're all getting ready for the, uh, the big release of Bemis in November, Bemis mm-hmm. series. So, should be great. Um, yeah. Uh, any last words, guys? I can't. We're what? We're like almost exactly a month out from it. Yeah. yeah. It's so cool. Four more, four more episodes. What are we covering? The new issue with the. Uh, Issue fourteen or the week after? No, I think it. I think it's a week after. I think. Oh, um, awesome. amazing! Yeah, so we can dedicate a panel by panel review um, for that one again. Awesome. Which be really cool. Would you be keen to do that, Rebecca? Or? Yeah, yeah. Of yeah. Of yeah. Yeah. Fantastic. Awesome stuff. Yeah, great. Cool. Um, alrighty. Well, it's a uh, it's goodbye, I guess, from us. And. Uh, May Conchu protect the denizens of the night. Bye-bye. Catch you later. Bye. Moon Knight and affiliated characters, stories and events are properties of Marvel Characters Incorporated. Materials used and discussed within the podcast are intended for critique and review purposes only under the fair dealing concept of the current Copyright Act. The views, information or opinions expressed during the podcast are solely those of the individuals involved and do not necessarily represent those of the copyright owners.